It is 2-3 USF against 0-3 Northeastern. And here's the starting lineup for the visitors. Second baseman Scott Holswasser will lead it off. Center fielder Jared Dupree will bat second. The third baseman Ian Fair will hit third. Casey DiLoretto is the first baseman and he'll bat cleanup. Followed by the left fielder Kyle Peterson, the DH Jake Rosen, and right fielder Jeff Costello. Teddy Baudet is the catcher, he'll bat eighth, and Spencer Smith will be the shortstop, and he will bat ninth. For the Bulls defensively, Daniel Cantu gets his first start since opening day. He'll be in left field, Dante Mitchell in center, and Dylan Besnier in right. Dylan Buck will be at third. Alex Bello gets a start at shortstop. J.D. Dutka at second, Riley Hogan at first, Jake Sullivan on the mound, and uh, rather Jake Sullivan catching, and the other Sullivan, Colin Sullivan, will be on the mound. He pitched four innings in his first start against Marist. No wins, no losses, 6.75 earned run average. And, Jay, he had a ton of strikeouts on opening night, but he didn't get too far into the game, and the Bulls hoping he can give them more than four today. Yeah, when you get a lot of strikeouts, it's at times a double-edged sword because your pitch count does have the propensity to go up quickly. So, yeah, early at-bat, early count outs doesn't always have to be a strikeout. Get that first pitch rolling over ground ball, that's how you can pitch deeper into the game today. On the surface of it, you would think we would have maybe more than one pitcher's duel in this series because both teams have not put up a lot of big numbers offensively. Northeastern, in fact, was shut out in each of their first two games against Alabama. They dropped game three by a 6-3 to three final. And the Bulls, of course, getting only one run in their game against Florida A&M and three runs against Florida State in their 0-2 Tallahassee road trip that took place Monday and Tuesday. So both teams looking to break out offensively. Bulls will be wearing home whites. They've got the pinstripes today with the green lettering. And for Northeastern, the traditional gray pants, bright red jerseys. They are playing USF for the first time since 2004. Bulls won that game 4-1 to one way back when at the old Red McEwen Field. Anthem time here, then the first pitch on USF Bulls Unlimited presented by Marathon.
great to be with you as we get set for double header day. The Bulls in Northeastern. Colin Sullivan has completed his warm up tosses and we're just about ready to go. Umpires today, Ray Chamberlain will work the plate. The veteran Rick Darby at first and Rob Healy at third. Scott Holzwasser will step in. He's the Northeastern second baseman, right handed batter, and the first pitch is low for a ball. Holzwasser hitting 111. No homers and none driven. the winds would blow and after a few games we looked up and said boy it's blowing toward the right field corner again now 10 years later it's still blowing toward the right field corner pitch is outside and it's three and two trying to move them quite a bit out there so a full count to Holzwasser leading off the northeastern first Sullivan winds and deals and he lost them pitch is up high for ball four in his first start, we talked about the strikeouts racked up by Sullivan. He had eight in four innings, and he didn't walk a single batter in that start, but he opens up with a walk here. Now has to face a left-handed batter, Jared Dupree, the center fielder, hitting 400. No homers, one driven in, and he swings and misses at the first one, 0-1. That's the advantage, Jim, of him going out of the stretch, even with nobody on, when the runner gets on, not a big deal, not change your mind. Kind of a blank slate in terms of base running information on Northeastern. This one is grounded up the middle, and that's going to get into center field. Holzwasser digging for third, and he beats the throw. Runner is on the corner, is nobody out. We were just about to say that in the entire series against Alabama, Northeastern didn't attempt to stolen base, but Holzwasser in particular looked pretty quick getting from first to third there. Yeah, Mitchell was playing pretty shallow there, so a good job there by the third base coach to be aggressive and put some pressure on the Bulls' defense early. Now there's runners on the corner with nobody out. And Ian Fair is the batter, the third baseman, 182. Bulls infield at double play depth. There's still nobody out in the inning. The two pitch called strike three on the outside corner. So Di Loretto is the second. And there's 
One out in the inning. That'll bring up Kyle Peterson, left fielder, left-handed batter. He's looking for his first hit of the season. Yeah, you don't see many uh, called third strikes on the no two count. Usually he's trying to waste a pitch there. Maybe that's what Fair, uh, excuse me, Villaretta a little bit of overthinking there. Sullivan will take it. Now one pitch away from getting out of this out inning. So trailing one to nothing here in the top of the first. Swung on and fouled, and boy, that got a piece of Jake Sullivan. Jake is all right. He's trying to shake it off. The home plate umpire, Ray Chamberlain, will walk the baseball out to Colin Sullivan. And trainer's not coming out, so Jake Sullivan must have indicated that he's okay, but he is taking a little time to get back to planet Earth. First pitch change up there. Peterson out in front. That one gets Sullivan. I, if I'm Ducka, uh, there at second base or Hogan at first. I'm looking for a ground ball my way. No balls, one strike. Runners at first and second, one out and one in for Northeastern. One strike pitch is low, one ball, one strike. Busy day, there's softball going on just to our right tournament play. Bulls will play two games later today. We'll keep you up to date on those scores. Women's basketball is in Memphis. They play at four today. There's a called strike, one and two. I think that's the big adjustment we're going to see from Colin Jim. We'll watch uh, over the next couple innings. Away, away, away early through the first couple batters. Those last good pitches have been in. <coughs> One ball, two strikes. Checks the runner, and this is rolled up toward first. Sullivan will grab it. Toss to Hogan, covering for the out. Both runners move up. No chance at all to get anything more out of that. But they do record the second out. Sullivan had a little trouble getting it out of his glove, but got it to Hogan in time. Dupree to third, Fair to second, two outs in the inning. And the D.H. Jake Rosen to the plate, hitting 143, one out of seven. No homers, none driven in. So the infield moves back to normal depth. And a called strike as Sullivan now has an opportunity to get out of this with only one run. Jim, I don't know if you can tell by your vantage point, but look how close Rosen is to the box. I mean, he's right, his tippy toes are right on there. You've got to jam him inside. Pitch. Called strike, breaking ball with the letters, and now it's 0-2. I like that. Working in and out, throwing that front door breaking ball like you saw right there. Now it opens up a whole lot what Colin can do right here. First three men reached in the inning. Sullivan has retired the last two, almost got him there. Tried to get him to chase an outside pitch. Rosen held up. It's 1-2. Pulls outfield at normal depth, playing straight away for the DH, Jake Rosen. 1-2 pitch, check swing, he held up, pitches outside, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Dupree at third, Fair at second, two outs in the inning. 2-2 two, two pitch. Rolled out towards short. Bello will have to charge. Throws in time. Nice play by Alex Bello getting the start at shortstop today. Sullivan allows one run on two hits. No errors and two left on base. We head to the bottom of the first inning and the Bulls trailing one to nothing on USF Bulls Unlimited presented by Marathon. Twenty-five to grab all your food and beverage needs. Hey, well, fans, stop by and check out the merchandise store located in the top floor. Find the concession stand for all the latest USF clothing and mail. Speaker, you get the blue line of the tickets here. The USF bookstores open seven days a week on the USF campus, and you can also shop online 24 7 at usstopmortalbookstore.com. News, facts, scores, photos, exclusive content, and more. The only way to get the latest on USF athletics is to log on to gousfbolt.com. For the best coverage of USF sports, the only place to go is GoUSFBulls.com.
And we head to the bottom of the first. Bulls trailing one to nothing. Here is the Bulls batting order. Dante Mitchell leading off today, playing center field. The DH, Jordan Santos, will hit second, followed by J.D. Dutka. Riley Hogan, who had a very good two games in Tallahassee, will bat cleanup. Jake Sullivan hitting fifth, and Dylan Buck, the third baseman. Alex Bello, the shortstop. Daniel Cantu will hit eighth. And Dylan Besnier is in the nine spot, and he will face right-hander Kyle Murphy. Murphy started one of the games against Alabama, and he didn't get far into it. He pitched two innings, allowed four runs, three earned, three hits. He walked four, struck out three, and took the loss. First pitch to Mitchell is a strike. So Murphy 0-1 on the season, an ERA of 13.50. Mitchell takes low one and one. Mitchell has found his way to the leadoff spot in the last couple of games. 278 is his average. And he takes a breaking ball for a strike, one and two. For a guy that's played five games, Jimmy's already reached base 10 times, five hits and five walks on base percentage of 435. That's what you want. Swung on and missed, strike three. A good fastball by Murphy and there's one down. Mitchell started the year toward the bottom of the order, has worked his way to the top by getting on base. Here's Jordan Santos now, 235, no homers, one driven in. He is the DH today, left-handed batter. One out and the base is empty. And he takes a strike, so Murphy looks sharp in the early going. He's got a little zip too. Seems like he's bringing some heat today. Breaking ball there, and that catches the inside corner 0 and 2. They're playing Santos a little bit to the opposite field. The center fielder Dupree, a good maybe eight or nine steps toward left. Check swing, and this rolls up the left side. Will find its way near the northeastern dugout. No balls, two strikes. Good crowd here. It's a little chilly still in the shade where most of the seats are located. Pitch is low. One ball, two strikes. Probably a little more comfortable out on the berms yeah. where the sun is shining brilliantly. One ball, two strikes on Santos. Fouled at the plate. Two games today, there'll be about 40, maybe 45 minutes between games. And for those joining us on USF Bulls Unlimited in between games, we'll have Michael Kelly's podcast, Bulls Speed Ahead. Pitch is low three and two. He and football coach Jeff Scott will take us through the time between games today. So cool, man. <laughs> Michael Kelly to have his podcast there and be able to get a first-hand look at everything that's going on. Breaking ball is low, three and two, and they uh, they do like to hold some things back in order to break news oh, on, yeah. that, on that podcast, too. It is well worth listening to. Three, two to Santos, foul back to the net. This is a typical Jordan Santos at bat. Mm -hmm. He gets down 0 and 2. He works it all the way full, hits a couple of foul balls, and a lot of times he will draw the walk. If nothing else, he will extend the pitcher. Swung on and missed this time, though, and there's two down in the inning. So Kyle Murphy has struck out the first two men he has faced. And that'll bring up J.D. Dutka hitting 200, no homers, and one driven in. heard Billy Mole in the pregame show talk about strikeouts concerning him a little bit. Now the Bulls are averaging a little over 10 strikeouts per game. They have 52 in five games. First pitch to Dutka is in the dirt 1-0 and back-to-back oh, -back K's here to start this one today. One ball no strikes to Dutka. That one just missed outside, 2-0. You mentioned the strikeouts, Jim. Out of the nine guys in the starting lineup today for the Bulls, 
41 strikeouts between those nine hitters. It's just too much. There's a fast strike, two and one. Now 43 is the first two gentlemen striking out today. Yeah, it concerns you, especially early in the season, and we saw this against Marist a little bit. 2-1 pitch, swung on and missed, 2-2. Two and two. Was when you put it in play, especially against these northern teams yeah. early in the season, and here's another one here today against the Bulls, you see some defensive vulnerabilities sometimes. Pop foul to the right, it'll stay two and two. That's what really turned that series against Marist around last weekend. When the Bulls lost the first game, were losing the second game, and then Marist kind of self-destructed defensively. Doesn't happen if you don't put the ball in play. Pitch is outside, and now Dutka has worked it full, so the second straight three and two count for Kyle Murphy. Two outs, base is empty. Fouled back to the netting. And conversely to that, Jim, you're looking at the amount of walks there, and it's only 13 walks in the guys that are in the starting lineup today. Three hit by pitches, so start of today's game, 41 strikeouts to 16 free passes. Got to shore that up a little bit. 3-2 pitch, there's a free pass. The fastball is inside, and the Bulls have a two-out base runner as Dutka draws the walk. That'll bring up Riley Hogan hitting 294, no homers, none driven in. Hogan got off to a really, really difficult start in the series against Marist. He was hitless in the entire series. And then went to Tallahassee and had five hits in two games. Had a really good game against Florida State. So we'll see if he can keep it going here with two outs and Dutka on first. And he drives one to center field, but there's plenty of room. Dupree ranging over toward left, and he makes the catch. And that is the end of the first inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. And one left on base. We head to inning number two. First game of a doubleheader, and the Bulls trail Northeastern one to nothing on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Now, after the USF talent shuffle, we have Kevin with us today to try to guess which talent it is. Let's see if he can get it right. What's the password again? If the staff works, it should be Bulls 2020. Try media access. 2019. Thank you. All right, Kevin, what's your guess? All right, number one is congrats. Congratulations. That's your USF health. Don't forget on Bulls Unlimited 1 this afternoon, USF women's basketball on the road against Memphis. And here on Unlimited 2, a whole bunch of baseball, 18 innings minimum today. Hopefully no more than that, but we're, we're already two extra inning games behind us on this 2020 season. Here's Jeff Costello to lead it off. And he rolls one right up the middle, ranging over is Dutka, and he makes the catch and throws him out. Dutka was... In a shift, he was near the second base bag playing behind it, and he wound up being right place, right time, one down. And that ball came up on Dutka at the end. He did a great job of seeing that all the way into his hands. A nice transfer and a throw across the diamond for the first out. Good play by J.D. Teddy Baudet, the catcher, number eight hitter at the plate, another righty, and he takes a strike. He's hitting 333. No homers and none driven in. So Sullivan, after allowing three base runners to start the game, has now retired four in a row. That pitch is low, one and one. Still want to see some length out of him today, Jim, especially with a couple of games today. Need some early outs like you saw the first half at the inning. 
Popped up, right side foul territory. Hogan measuring it, but he will run out of room, and it'll be one and two. I think just kept on carrying. I thought it was going to stay in uh, stay in play for a minute there, but wind took it out. And you mentioned the wind before, Jim, going out to the right side. I'm sure it'll play a part in some way today. One ball, two strikes. Two games today, one tomorrow, and this series will be finished. And then we've got another one next weekend. Pitch is outside. Sullivan tried to bring it back, but it's two and two. And again, Billy Mole with his sense of humor. Northeastern one week, Northwestern the next week. Fouled off to the net. It'll stay two and two. We'll be back into the more traditional Friday, Saturday, Sunday schedule next week. 2-2 pitch, swung on and missed strike three. Sullivan has his second strikeout and there's two outs in the inning. Spencer Smith now the shortstop, 111, no homers, none driven in, left-handed batter. Sullivan had a 21 pitch first inning, only seven so far in the second. That one is low, one ball, no strikes. Spencer Smith, SS, play shortstop number 22. <laughs> Pretty symmetrical. Taking there, and there's a strike, one and one. Two outs, base is empty. Fastball inside corner called strike right at the knees, one and two. Nice pitch there, and one pitch away from Colin Gittin and having a much better economical, much more economical ending this time. Head coach of Northeastern, by the way, is Mike Glavin. Fouled back to the screen. You might have heard of his brother. Won a game or two with the Atlanta Braves in his career. One ball, two strikes. Fouled off to the left, that'll be out of play. The three games Northeastern played prior to this, all against Alabama, and they were true road games. They were at Alabama. 10 to nothing, 8 to nothing, and 6 to 3 were the final scores. 1 2 pitch is poked into right field, and that's going to fall for a base hit. Over to grab it is Besnier, but Smith is aboard with two outs, and Sullivan's hope of a 1-2-3 inning goes by the boards. Now Scott Holwasser walked and scored a run in the first. Holwasser doing what a leadoff hitter does, getting on base, setting the table, scoring the first run of the game. Bulls need to keep him off the base pass here. Wouldn't be surprised if you saw some action on the base pass. I know it's tough when you don't score many runs like you did in the series against Alabama to really get an idea of the base running. But two outs with your leadoff hitter on. This is steal time. Here he goes. And there he goes. The throw is there in time. The tag is down. Out is Spencer Smith. And the inning is over. Jake Sullivan with a nice strong throw. And the inning comes to a close with no runs, no one hit rather, no errors, and nobody left on base. We head to the bottom of the second. Bulls trail one to nothing on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon.
Leading off for the Bulls, the catcher number 10, Jake Sullivan. Bulls back at it, down one to nothing here in the bottom of the second. Jake Sullivan will lead it off, and he takes a breaking ball for a strike. Sullivan at 150, no homers and one driven in. Fastball outside corner, strike 0 and 2. Kyle Murphy has looked really sharp so far. He's walked one, struck out two. Yeah, I've been impressed with the way he's been throwing the ball today already, Jim. Ahead here, no balls, two strikes. Fouled off to the right. Northeastern has a pretty good group of former players that have made the major leagues. One that will grab the attention of Bay Area baseball fans, Carlos Pena. Yeah. Fastball high, one and two. Another one that's currently in the league, a really good reliever, Adam Adovino, was a yeah. Colorado Rocky for a long time, now with the Yankees. 1-2 pitch, hit sharply between short and third. It's flagged by the shortstop. The long throw is in time. Spencer Smith with a terrific play, heading deep in the hole toward third and throws out Sullivan by a full step. Terrific defensive play, one down. Yeah, you were wondering if he was gonna to get to that ball initially, Jim, he does, and then if he had enough arm uh, strength to throw it across the diamond, and he did as well. Unbelievable play by Spencer Smith there to keep the Bulls off the bases. Dylan Buck now, Bulls third baseman, hitting 200, no homers and one driven in. He takes a ball. Mentioned Adam Adovino from New York City playing for the Yankees first. Yankee to everywhere the number zero. That is low, two balls, no strikes. It's pretty crazy to think for a team that's played near the 100 year mark and didn't have one guy wear number zero. Well, so especially crazy. with all the retired yeah, numbers. Yeah, exactly. Fastball high, and now it is 3 0 on Dylan Buck. Uh, start petitioning for new numbers <laughs> in that franchise or running out of. In a lot of 71s and yeah. 59s, there's a strike three and one. I was thinking about that one day down the road, 50, 60 years from now. Is, are they going to have to go to three numbers? Yeah. You never know. That would be the franchise, that's, that's right. for sure. That's right. Fouled back to the screen by Buck, and now the count is full three and two. If I'm not mistaken, I think they have more retired numbers than any other team in professional sports. I could be wrong. I would think them and, and Canadians probably. The yeah, Montreal Canadians. And, and the Boston Celtics yeah, have a ton yeah. of them too. Three, two to Buck, hit sharply, but on the ground towards second. Holzwasser scoops it up, throws in time, and there's two down. So the Bulls are making a little bit better contact here in the second, but nothing to show for it. Two outs, base is empty, and now Alex Bello getting the start at shortstop today, looking for his first hit of the season. Two outs, base is empty. Bulls trailing one to nothing here in the bottom of the second. First pitch outside, one and oh. Murphy likes to work fast. Gets that ball right back on the rubber and lets it rip. One oh pitch. Hit sharply, knocked down by the pitcher. He recovers, throws, and that's it for the Bulls. Bello hit that ball hard, but Murphy was able to knock it down, make the throw in time. Three ground outs for the Bulls, and now we go to the third. Northeastern one, USF nothing on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. For Hungary Pizza Race, we have Curtis and Grant competing to win their section of Hungry Howie's coupon. If you're seated in section 101 and 102, your team coach holds. If you're 103 and 104, your team Rocky. Whoever gets to the foul ball pole first will be sent, sending their section home with coupons for cheesy bread. Get ready, get set, and go! Looks like Rocky's in the lead. Here comes Coach Cole at the end. Who's it going to be? Congratulations, Rocky wins! Sections 103 and 104, you get to home with Humphrey Howie!
We head to inning number three. Jim Lauk, Jay Retcher with you. It is one to nothing Northeastern. Colin Sullivan beginning his third inning of work. And time called right before he was ready to deliver his first pitch. Scott Holzwasser leads it off. He was at the plate when Spencer Smith was thrown out trying to steal to win the second. And Sullivan starts him out with a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. Holzwasser walked and scored his first time. That one is low and away, 1-1. One and one. Yeah, and you can almost live with that caught stealing there, Jim, because it really sets you up for the top of the lineup the following inning. Outside, 2-1. and one. And if you do it the right way, I mean, even if it's a, you know, you got to make a good throw, and that's what we saw Jake Sullivan do. If that ball goes in the outfield, you never know. You wind up on third base with one of your best players up the plate. 2-1 pitch, skied towards center, shallow. Bellow can't find it. Coming in from left field is Cantu, wow. and he makes the catch one away. Jim, Boy. I think he was the only one that saw that because it looked like Mitchell had a late break at center, and I don't think Ducka had a good look. Bellow didn't even move. So good thing That's Cantu saw it. He was the one that was able to run over and grab it. Wound up grabbing it not far from the infield no. dirt. So a long run, but one down, and now Jared Dupree who singled his first time, made it as far as third before being stranded. Check swing, the Alaska third, but he held up. It's 1-0. and Pitch was high. Northeastern has been to eight NCAA tournaments, the most recent in 2018. This ball is driven toward the corner in right field. That's going to hit the wall and be extra bases. Dupree digging for two. Throw in quickly, and he just did make it safely into second with a double. Tell you what, a, a nice swing there by Dupree, but a very good job by Besnier and Wright being able to pick up ball off the wall, making a good one-hop throw to Bellow at second. Bellow wasn't able to hold on to the baseball, but I think he would have been in there anyway. But you got to like how the freshman was able to pick up the ball there and make a nice, accurate throw to the bag. The Bulls fortunate to pray didn't get any air underneath that one because that got out there in a hurry and hit about midway up the wall in right field. Swung on and missed by Ian Fair. Fair singled, knocked in the Northeastern Rudd his first time. Behind here, no balls, one strike. One out in the inning, Dupree on second after the double. That's four hits already for Northeastern. Swung on and missed again. Sullivan ahead 0-2. Four hits for Northeastern yet. The Bulls have yet to find one themselves. Usually when you say something like that, the next time up, they're able to find a way on base somehow. It's interesting to look through uh, the visiting team notes, especially a team like Northeastern that we see with little frequency. Here's a ground ball to third. Fair ball that's grabbed by Buck. Throws to first in time. He looked the runner back, but Dupree alertly still able to advance once the throw was made. So Fair is retired 5-3. to three. Dupree to third with two outs. And Case Corey DiLoretto to the plate. Yeah, interesting decision there by Dupree to be able to go to third. I mean, now he obviously has the opportunity to score on either a balk or a wild pitch or a pass ball. Swung on and missed on the off-speed pitch, 0-1. But interesting decision there because if you get thrown out at third and make the third out at third base, it's one of those cardinal rules you don't want to do. But a good job because he made it without a throw. No balls, one strike on De Loretto. Fly ball right field, hit pretty well, but Besnier has room, makes the catch. The inning is over, and the Bulls get out of trouble. No runs, one hit, no errors. One left on base. We have played two and a half in the first game of a doubleheader. Bulls trail one to nothing on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon.
Dukes. It's time for another round of Herd Perks trivia. Open the Herd Perks app and earn bonus points when you answer the following question. How many NCAA championships have the USF baseball team competed in? Not using the Herd Perks app? Download it now and start earning points. We'll announce the correct answer a little bit later on in the game. Bottom three, Bulls trailing one to nothing. Cantu, Besnier, and Mitchell. Freshman, freshman, freshman for the Bulls here in the third. Cantu to lead it off, and he hits one on the ground. Backhanded by the first baseman, De Loretto, Tosses to the pitcher, covering, and there's quickly one out. That's four consecutive ground outs recorded by Kyle Murphy, who has already gone deeper into this game than he did in his first start against Alabama. Dylan Besnier now hitting 083, no homers, none driven in. Point I was going to make about Northeastern as Besnier takes a strike. They are not a team that you would think, just on the basis of it, had ever played in the College World Series. Check swing and he went around 0 and 2, but they did. 1966. Oh, yeah, I remember it well. They went 0-2, ah. but they were there to their credit. Play out of the America East now. Here's a swing and a miss, strike three. Besnier is down, and there's very quickly two outs. Murphy, a senior, pitching with that confidence and bravado that you get from playing and pitching for a couple years at the collegiate level. You can tell he's throwing with a lot of confidence right now. The USF lineup needs to do something to kind of shake it up. I mentioned they play out of the America East. That actually ended in 2005. First pitch to Mitchell is outside 1-0. and Dante struck out his first time 0 for 1. Bulls still looking for their first hit. Ball is low and away, now 2-0. Dutka has been the only base runner. He drew a walk back in the first. 2-0 pitch. That's outside. 3-0. So you would think a take or maybe two here from Mitchell to try to get something going with two outs. Here's the 3-0. That's the strike. Scoreboard reads 2-1, but I think it's 3-1. Yeah, there's the correction from home plate umpire Ray Chamberlain. So three balls, one strike. Swung on and missed, full count. Big swing there from the leadoff hitter, 3-1. Span the zone a little bit. But now you got to get back to your uh, roots here and be able to put the ball in play or just get on base. 3-2 pitch, fouled off to the right. Murphy has walked one, struck out three. And he's full on Mitchell here with two outs and the base is empty in the bottom of the third. Murphy winds and deals and the fastball is inside so Mitchell is aboard with two outs. We have seen Mitchell's speed and it's pretty impressive. He's one for one on steals. The team is six for seven. We'll see if this is an opportunity for him or not here with two outs. Jordan Santos at the plate. He struck out swinging his first time up. Go. Throw to first, ball gets away, and Mitchell didn't see it. Didn't take off immediately, and the ball didn't get very far away from DiLoretto, so no chance to advance. Yeah, if he picks up that ball right away, Jim, I think he's uh, standing on second pretty easy. He's got the speed to do so. Got a pretty good lead once again. He's staying put, and Santos swings and fouls it off to the left side out of play, 0-1. Another opportunity here. Mitchell with some real good speed. You got a right-handed pitcher in Murphy, left-handed batter in Santos, so the catcher is not going to be able to use his peripheral vision to be able to see him take off. I wouldn't be surprised if he's moving here. Throw back to first again, and Mitchell there safely. Bulls just trying to shake something up yeah, right now. Something. They haven't had a runner get past first base so far. Trailing one to nothing here in the bottom of the third. They 
is set up on the outside part of the plate and the pitch is low and it's one and one. Had a no hitter last night across the way. Softball beating FIU, Georgina Korik and Vivian Pond combined no hitter. Georgina's had some year. One one pitch. Big curveball is over for a strike one and two. I was surprised. Of course, no hitters are a little bit more prevalent in softball than baseball with the seven innings yeah. and some other factors, but I was surprised to find out that was the 27th no-hitter in USF wow. softball history. Throwback to first, Mitchell is back in safely. I was feeling good because that's the third one I've called, and I nice. thought i got to have a pretty good percentage of them, and I don't have a real <laughs> good percentage yeah, of 11 them. 11% of them. Yeah. One ball, two strikes on Santos, again back to first. Murphy doing a pretty nice job of keeping Mitchell near the bag. And it's still one and two. Got Santos on the changeup swinging to strike him out last time. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw another off-speed pitch here. If you see that, Mitchell should be going. He's off with the pitch, and the ball is fouled back to the screen. Boy, he had a pretty good jump on that, but he'll have to retreat to first base. One ball, two strikes on Santos. And that was an elevated fastball, which is, you know, it's good and bad. I mean, good for a pitcher because if he does take it, it's almost like a pitch out. Bad, that ball's anywhere near the zone and Santos squares it up, that thing might be out of here. Swung on, fouled at the plate. Oh, if Santos can pull a ball, he has a world of room in right center field. The right oh, fielder, wow. Costello, is playing pretty much straight away, if not maybe a step or two toward the line and Dupree in center is swung way over toward left. Again, back to first, and Mitchell in safely. Yeah, you gotta figure if he gets one, then the guy Mitchell's definitely scoring. Even if he gets one down the right field line as well, so Dante's gonna be off with the crack of the bat. One, two pitch, he's running again, and it's swung on and missed. Well, they're gonna have to throw down to first, but they get Santos and the inning is over. So that's another strikeout for Murphy as the catcher throws down to first for out number three for the Bulls. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. Jay will take you through the middle innings. We're going to the fourth. The Bulls trail it one to nothing on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. USF Baseball on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Welcome back to the USF Baseball Stadium. Alongside Jim Lauk, I am Jay Retcher. USF trailing Northeastern 1-0. First pitch cut on and missed by the left fielder for Northeastern, Kyle Peterson. Good job by Colin Sullivan getting ahead there. Peterson grounded out back to Colin in the first inning. Second pitch, touchdown. Evened up at one apiece. Dylan Buck playing right on the edge of the grass there in case... Pearson shortens up and tries to lay down a bunt. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That ball's fouled straight back, strike two. And that's going to be the key, Jim, for Colin. He has to keep this pitch count down, get them to induce, try to induce some swings early on in the at-bat, let his defense do the work. At least so far, our thoughts about a low-scoring game looking accurate. Strike three, looking. Good job by Colin there, working the outside corner. One away. We talked about 
the eight strikeouts that he had in the first that's game. A lot of those into eight, deep counts, eight. and that's why he didn't pitch for very long. That'll bring up Jake Rosen, who grounded out to shortstop his first time up to end the first inning. First pitch, check swing, did he go? Yes, he did. Nice job there by Rick Darby. He was all over that thing. And Collin again, starting ahead for strike one. Second pitch, just a bit high and away. Ball one. One, four, and zero for Northeastern. Zeros across the board for USF here in the top of the fourth inning. That pitch is cut on and miss. Strike two. Both these pitchers like to work fast. Sullivan, something that I've kind of caught my eye the last two years, making sure that even thrown out of the stretch, he uses that lower half. That ball's up and away. Even up. And you want to keep that good pace, that good momentum. But I think at times, and we saw it with Murphy when he walked Dutka, you don't want to go too fast. That pitch is down, full count, three and two. What was the old... Uh, John wouldn't be quick, but don't hurry. That's kind of the fine line both these pitchers are telling right now. So here's the 3-2. That ball's popped up. Looks like it'll stay in play. Buck gives it a look into shallow foul territory, and he grabs it for out number two. Nice job by Buck. This is what's termed a high sky. There's very few clouds, just a lot of blue, and we saw a little bit of difficulties with pop-ups earlier. That one was a mile high, and Buck did a really good job just staying with it, making it a routine play. So two away now for Jeff Costello, the Northeastern right fielder. He shortens up on the on the bat and bunts one down the first baseline, but it'll trickle foul. Nice job by Costello there. Even though Hogan was playing in, if Sullivan makes that play, I don't think he's going to be able to get Costello running down line because he is unbelievably fast. Yeah, I think that's a base hit if it had stayed oh, fair. Sure. So Agreed. it's Agreed. fortunate for the Bulls it just got that little roll and wound up going into foul territory. So Sullivan will take that. Hogan takes another step in. There's three Bulls infielders on the left side. Costello goes that way. It looks like he'll get out of play. So quickly ahead, 0-2 on the northeastern right fielder. USF must know what they've got and Jeff Costello to have all three infielders swung over and a lot of times you'll see the second baseman playing right behind the bag. You're not seeing that. You're seeing Duck go all the way on the other side, almost playing up the middle as a shortstop. Here's the 0-2 just off the outside corner, 1-2. Colin thought he had it, took the big step toward the dugout and had to put the brakes on. Here's the one-two pitch. That ball's cut on. Fly ball center field. Mitchell's underneath it. He'll make the grab for the third out. So the first one, two, three inning for Sullivan today. And the Bulls looking for some help on the offensive side. We'll see if they can do that. When we come back, you're listening to USF Bulls Unlimited presented by Marathon. Welcome back. Bulls trailing Northeastern 1 0. JD Ducka will lead off. It's 3 4 5 for the Bulls here in the bottom of the fourth. JD walked in the first. He does a, a great job of not expanding the zone. So that last, week, uh, that last weekend as well against Marist here. I think this is the right guy, right spot right now. He knows how to handle the bat. He's got that veteran presence, senior infielder. 
And this could be the perfect guy to start this rally for the Bulls here in the fourth. First pitch, breaking ball, taken away, 1-0. Just like his calm presence there at the plate. That was a big loss last year yeah, when was. he got hurt six games in, missed the rest of the year. That ball's away 2 0. Oh. We've seen with this Bulls team in the past, and I know Mitchell's got a lot of speed, but we've seen Santos at the top of the lineup last year, Kyle Phillips. A lot of times it's just about guys getting on base. That third pitch is high, 3 0. Oh. So with the way that he's got such a presence at the plate, Jim, I wouldn't be surprised if JD's, you know, Gets a chance at the top of the lineup as well. Here's the 3 0. That pitch is in there, strike one. And a couple of guys like that in this lineup. Jordan Santos is the same way. Here's the 3 1. That ball's in there, strike two. So a good job there by Murphy falling behind 3 0. Comes right back with two heaters. Now we have a full count. That ball's cut on and oh, caught by the catcher. Nice job there by Baudet to hold on to that foul tip, and it's one away. Well, you have to give Murphy a lot of credit. He has walked to, but it seems like so many times he's been behind in the count, and he's come back and gotten guys on 3-2 pitches. Another one there to start the fourth. The fifth strikeout for Murphy today, and that'll bring up Riley Hogan, the first baseman. He takes a breaking ball in there for a strike. Rally flew out to center to end the first inning, but a real good little ride into it. Here's the 0-1. That ball just misses hitting him inside, 1-1. One one. You mentioned Riley really picking it up in Tallahassee. This is a young man. That he's got the look of a ball player, and with USF desperately needing some pop in the bat, he's going to get every opportunity to do so. That ball's popped up. Looks like it'll stay in play. Third baseline fair in foul territory. Oh, and he bobbles it. He doesn't make the grab. And the ball is actually caught by one of the players in the, or coaches, excuse me, in the Northeastern dugout. So oh, you want to talk about no help from your no, own dugout. Not at all. Those guys were just statues there, and, and Fair couldn't make the catch. He got there and then just dropped it. So Riley Hogan getting another opportunity here. It's a 1 2 count. That ball's cut on and missed. The ball's bouncing away. Loday picks it up, throws it over to first for the second out. That's six strikeouts now for Murphy. That was a really good breaking ball. Riley with a pretty futile swing there. First XFL touchdown a moment ago for Quinton Flowers on a running play. First offensive TD in Tampa Bay Vipers history goes to USF's own Quinton Flowers. In his home stadium. How cool is that? That'll bring up Jake Sullivan with two away here, grounded out to short. First pitch breaking ball in there for a cold strike. Remember that really, really nice play by Spencer Smith to get Jake leading off the second. Let's see if Jake can have some payback here. That breaking ball's cut on and missed strike two. And the big key, it's, it's just still one nothing. I know it's been a rough go of it so far for the USF offense, but you can't try to get it all back in one swing. Just put the ball in play. Like we mentioned what happened last week with Maris, put the pressure on the defense. Here's the 0-2. That ball's away, 1-2. Nice and easy. Hit the ball where it's pitched. It seems like there's a big gap in right center field. In center, Dupree has been played, shaded over to left center for pretty much the majority of the hitters. That breaking ball just off the inner half. The Northeastern fans and dugout really wanted that pitch. It just looked like it was off the inside half, just a touch. Ray Chamberlain was all over that, especially with him just over the left shoulder of Baudet. That's the side he's getting a real good look at. There's a breaking ball. It doesn't really break. That ball stays up and in. Now the count is full. Sullivan's another one of those guys. He he likes to take those big swings, Jim, but he's a guy as well. That's, he's not afraid to work in A-B. Here's the 3-2. That's a line drive, base hit up the middle, first base hit for the Bulls. Jake Sullivan hits the ball hard two times. First time, a great play by Smith. Smith wasn't getting that one, and the Bulls have their first hit of the day. And what you really like to see, too, is the pitch count because Murphy's had so many deep counts. He's mid-60s. He's actually 67 now through three and two-thirds. Bullpen is quiet, but you can't go at that pace 
that much longer, especially this early in the season. That's a good point. That'll bring up Dylan Buck here. First pitch, it gets away. Sullivan's going to reach, make a turn around second. So, okay, that's good. Sullivan, second base on the wild pitch. So Buck now with a 1-0 one one -oh count, a runner in scoring position here. First bull in scoring position today. That's good news here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Dylan grounded out to second, but I like staying inside the ball. Nice play by Holswasser at second to, to get him there in the second inning. So here's the 1 0 to the Bulls' third baseman. A fastball's in there for a call strike, 1 and 1. Buck is a guy that we saw last week almost put one out, hit one of the warning track in right field. When he's using the entire field, he's a tough guy to get out because that natural power is there. You see the power display during batting practice. Here's the 1 1. Breaking ball, nice, nice block there, and a good take by Dylan Buck, two and one. I think that's the adjustment that these hitters have to make. And we, we saw that some of the hitters that couldn't got to lay off that breaking ball down, force them to bring that breaking ball up. You do that, you have a much better chance of reading and reacting to the heater, and then the off speed. That's another ball down. Good job by Dylan, not expanding the zone. Alex Bello, USF shortstop, waiting on deck. Buck stepping in again, 3-1 count here. Sullivan leading off set. Murphy deals. Fastball, ground ball short. Ball comes up, oh, and booted. And Smith keeps it in front of him, but Buck is gonna reach on the error. Sullivan moves up to third base, and the Bulls have runners on the corners with two away. Well, that's what we talk about, pressure on the defense. Yep. It was a routine ground ball, but what made it difficult for Smith was that it went right through Sullivan, the base runner, as he tried to move from second to third. And I'm sure Smith got shielded a little bit, probably lost that ball momentarily, didn't pick it up again properly, and it's an E6. That's the third ground ball we've seen come up on the players. Bello was able to make one play, so was Ducka. Smith wasn't able to do that there for Northeastern. And that leads to the error. Here's Bello, first pitch swinging on the ball down in the dirt. Strike one, throw over to first base, Buck is back in time, but that's a perfect example right there, Jim. Bello trying to do just a little bit too much. Notice what Dylan did in his at-bat, didn't chase those breaking balls in the dirt. Bello lays off of that, they gotta bring the ball in the zone, and when he can square off a fastball, like we saw last year, he can really do some damage. Got a lot more power than people give him oh, credit yeah. for. Here's the 0-1. That ball gets away, not far enough for Sullivan to score, but far enough to get Buck to second base. And it looked like the catcher, Baudet, should have had that one, so. Yeah, I think that's think an interesting call. Yeah. I'd give it a pass ball, I'm but we'll, we'll see if the scorer agrees with us I'm or not. Either way, the force at second now goes away. So a couple of runners now in scoring position for Bello. One and one count, two away here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Bulls trailing one nothing. That breaking ball in there for a called strike, one and two. Boy, that's a nice pitch in a crucial situation, breaking away from the right-handed batter and catching the outside corner of the plate. But that's the important thing right there, Jim. You can't swing at a first pitch breaking ball in the dirt and then take one for a strike with a 1-1 one, one count. So now he's got to protect. Here's the 1-2 to Bello. Breaking ball in there. Ooh. The way that Ray Chamberlain was coming out of his crouch, it looked like he was going to punch him out, but no. Good take by Bello, and now it's twos up. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two runners on for the Bulls here in the bottom of the fourth. Bello is second year here with the Bulls. Murphy sets and deals. Fastball cut on and foul back. That's a souvenir for the softball fans over there. Wild and crazy day here at the complex. Getting here a couple hours before game time. The softball's already rearing and ready to go. You love to see teams from all over the country come to our wonderful place here in Florida. Breaking ball, cut on a miss, strike three. So Bello unable to come up with the hit, and Murphy wiggles out of room there. We head to the fifth inning. The Bulls finally get a base hit. No runs, one hit, no uh, one error, and two left on. We head to the fifth inning. Bulls trailing one nothing. You're listening to USF Baseball oh, here on USF Bulls Unlimited presented by Matt. Rockies, rookies, rookies, is over the kids ages 12 and below. Another to receive a personalized lanyard and credential, a birthday surprise from Rocky D. 
Bowl. Free admission to all USF athletic events, excluding the football, along with exclusive events and access throughout the year. Sign up today at go.usfbowl.com backslash Rockies rookies or visit the marketing table near the entrance to learn more. Bring your group to USF baseball games this season at the USF Baseball Stadium. Get your friends, kids, or co-workers together for a great day at USF Baseball. For group tickets, call 1-800-GO-BOLS or visit usfbowlstix.com. We head to the top of the fifth inning. Bulls trailing Northeastern 1 0. Jay Retro alongside Jim Lapp on this beautiful day here in Tampa Bay. And a much better effort there in the bottom of the fourth. No runs across for the Bulls, but a couple of runners in scoring position. Just still looking for that big hit. That'll bring up the catcher. He'll be leading off for Northeastern. Teddy Baudet takes the first pitch high from Colin Sullivan 1 0. Baudet struck out swinging in the second inning. Looks like they're starting to get some movement in both bullpens right now. That pitch down 2-0. Murphy's 79 pitches. Sullivan just made his 68th. 2-0 here to Baudet. And that ball's fly to right field. Shallow right field. Besnier giving a look in foul territory. And that ball falls in the Bermuda Triangle. No play. So 2-1 now to Baudet. Warming up in the Northeastern bullpen, it looks like senior Brian Ron Rodriguez, the right-hander. Still in the preliminaries, throwing some flat grounds. Hard to tell who's out there in the USF bullpen. Looks like there's two different guys out there. Here's the 2-1. That ball's line drive, base hit into right center field. So Baudet, the catcher, for Northeastern leads off with a single. And that'll bring up the shortstop Spencer Smith, who singled his last time up before getting caught stealing to end the second inning. He's had a, he had a one, one heck of a day so far, Spencer Smith. A nice play on Jake Sullivan, also made an error last inning. So he's got his fingerprints all over this ball game. O'Day off to a good start. He's now three out of eight. Had a couple of hits against Alabama. Squares up Spencer Smith and Bunce, but the ball's fouled straight back. Strike one. I wasn't uh, surprised by that at all. It looks like that bottom of the top of the lineup there for Northeastern. They like to do play a little small ball, bunt, hit and run, steal. That's what you got to do when you don't have a lot of big bats. You got to create have some havoc here. Don't be surprised if he does it again. Smith shortens up again. A little bit more of a sacrifice bunt right out in front. Jake Sullivan makes the play, throws over to first for the out. That ball looked like it was taken off on him. A nice play by Hogan to be able to stay there, make the grab for the first out. Moving up to second baseman, uh, second base is Baudet, and a runner in scoring position now for the Huskies with one away. Now that throw was into the runner as well. Hogan really saved the day. If he didn't grab that, it's down the right field line, and who knows what happens at that point. Instead, successful sacrifice, but the Bulls get the out. So now back to the top of the lineup now, Scott Holswasser, the second baseman for Northeastern. First pitch on the outside corner, strike one. And a great job there by Spencer Smith. The first bunt looked like it was a little bit more of a, a bunt for a base hit. Then when he fouled it straight back, see the adjustment, square early, get the ball down, do your job. That's exactly what he did. Here's the 0-1. That ball's line drive, base hit into left. Oh, and the ball's bobbled away by Cantu. Runner's going to score, and it's going to be 2-0 Northeastern. Looked like he was going to be held up at third, Baudet. But when Cantu couldn't pick up the ball cleanly, third base coach makes the quick adjustment, sends him home, no throw, and it's 2-0. Yeah, got to be a hit and an error. Great I don't think Holzwasser is going to get an RBI for that. No. But a couple of balls just tomahawked off Sullivan this inning. Holzwasser just drove that one into left field. And the importance of doing the little things there, getting that bunt down, Jim. 
who knows? If you don't get that bunt down, you're out another way, that could be a ground ball and double play. You never know. Doing those little things are the key. So that'll bring up the center fielder, Jared Dupree. This has him, he's had himself a pretty good day so far. A single in the first, a double in the third. Runner fakes to go and stays there. First pitch in there for a called strike. Again, with Holzwasser there at first base. You got to figure he's got the ability to move a little bit. Don't be surprised if he goes here. And Collins aware of that, so not his best move. Throws it over to first. No tag from Hogan. 2-0 Northeastern here in the top of the fifth inning. Dupree, the center fielder, having himself one heck of a day so far. And there's a ground ball. Base hit to right field. Holzwasser makes the turn. He'll go to third. Besnier into second base. Now runners on the corner with one away for the Huskies. That's the seventh base hit for Northeastern on the day. And the third of this inning, the Bulls have a right-hander throwing with some urgency in the bullpen. And Karsten Whitson is going to come out to talk to Sullivan. Bulls may be simply buying a little bit of time here as things have really turned in this fifth inning. Karsten Whitson actually made the call to the bullpen, so the Bulls will make a pitching change here. We'll tell you who's coming in when we return. You're listening to baseball right here on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Remember, pitching change breaks come out without a sound. Yep, yep, yep. Welcome back to the USF Baseball Stadium. Jay Retcher and Jim Locke here with you. So a pitching change for the Bulls, trailing 2-0 to Ryan Kirkering in the game now. And Orion has appeared in two games so far this year. He's got a 4-5 ERA. A couple innings pitch, one hit, one run, one walk, five strikeouts. And the Bulls are going to need him to be able to be at his best right here to kind of Nip this rally in the bud. Runners on the corners for the Northeastern offense. And Colin Sullivan, four and a third. Just didn't seem like he had his best stuff today. He was around the plate, but just no consistency really from him. There'd be at bats where he looked good, other at bats where he was just finding too much of the plate. Huskies offense was taking the prime advantage of that. 75 pitches in four and a third, and this time it's not because of the strikeouts. He had three, which is a reasonable number, but remember he had eight and four innings in his first start. So Kirkering gets another opportunity, and this guy, boy, he has a lively arm. Was really, really lights out in his first appearance, struggled a little bit in the second one, but he's a guy that I think has a chance to make a really big impact on the Bulls pitching staff. Kirkering, a guy who's got a real live arm, he throws across his body. He's got a tough matchup here with the third baseman, Ian Fair. One for two on the day, singled in the first, grounded out the third in the third. Kirkering, a guy just needing one pitch, get a ground ball here, get out of the inning. First pitch in there for a call strike, 0 and 1. Bulls at double play depth here. Bellow and Duck are looking for some double play magic. They're breaking ball front side, just inside, one and one. Kirkring's gotta be a tough draw for a right-handed batter. Throwing across his body. A lot of times you release that ball, he's almost releasing it from behind the hitter. And breaking ball, and it looked like Fear wasn't doing a great job of trying to get out of the way. He'll take his HBP, the ball just misses him. It's two and one now. Or he just flat out never saw yeah, it coming, true. which is that's possible true. also. That's true. Here's the 2-1. That ball's away. Gets to the backstop. The runner will score. 
Oleswasser crosses the plate. Dupree moves up to second base, and Northeastern now leads 3-0. Run will be charged to Sullivan, and wild pitch or pass ball could go either way, but most likely a wild pitch. Yeah, I think that one was a wild pitch. It kind of got away from him there. So a 3-1 count to Fair, the Huskies' third baseman. Kirkring ring sets and deals. Ball's in there for a called strike. It seemed like Kirkering on that one just kind of let his mechanics do the work there and try to overthrow him. That's what we saw on that fastball. He yanked it away. There's nothing Jake Sullivan could do to keep that ball in front of him. So here's the 3 2. And the ground ball down the third baseline, just foul. Dylan Buck playing on the line, so he got a real good look at that one. 3-0 Northeastern here in the top of the fifth inning. Seven hits on the day for the Huskies. Bulls just one hit, and that came last inning from Jake Sullivan. 3-2. and two. Breaking ball again. Foul down the third baseline. A nice play by the coach with the hat. Keeps it in front of him. And as a team, as Northeastern from the Northeast, obviously, Coming down here and playing some baseball, even if it's a little chilly for us down here because of how hot it was early in the week. It's got to be a beautiful day for them. Here's the 3-2. That ball is semi-blooped in the right field for the base hit. Besnier picks it up, hits Hogan for the cutoff, man, and that's a base knock. The second one of the day for Ian Fair. Now runners on the corners yet again for the Huskies' offense. And the Bulls got a break there because Dupree read it wrong at second yeah. base. He was going back to the bag, and... Had he read it correctly and just run flat out, he would have scored easily. Corey DiLoretto now stepping in. 0 for 2 on the day for Huskies first baseman, number 10. And again, Kirk Range just one pitch and getting out of this inning. That ball's up and away, 1 and 0. Kirk Ring, it doesn't seem as sharp as we saw from his first two outings. bit of an overthrow here. Second pitch. He's just not finishing that throw. And that ball's up and in a way. You can see when he's not getting that back shoulder all the way through to his target, that ball's kind of leaking out up and into a right-handed batter. And we've seen that on multiple occasions in his short outing already today. Here's the 2-0. There's a good breaking ball for a strike. Not sure if that was on the pitch or on the swing, but looks like the umpire, home plate umpire, Ray Chamberlain, saying yes, it was on the swing. So 2-1. And the Bulls with some similar concerns getting another yeah. right hand or getting warm out there. There's Kirk Ring, a nice pitch right there. Foul straight back, two and two. You want to get it all back in one pitch, but you got to let your defense do the work. So a 2 2 count to De Loretto here. The ball's cut on. Swung on, miss, strike three. Great job by Jake Sullivan. Looked like that ball was foul tip, but Jake did a good job of holding on to it. That could be a pretty big play right there. A lot of times you see that ball foul tipped and the catcher drops it. The guy comes up for the next pitch and gets a base hit. So hopefully for the Bulls, the opposite of that happens. He made a quick out right here. So Kyle Peterson now stepping in, the left fielder for Northeastern. Two on the day. First pitch cut on, driven to, driven to right field. Besnier back, 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 and it's gone. Home run, Kyle Peterson. And that ball just kept carrying. Besnier had a beat on it, but isn't able to make the play, and it's now 6 0 Northeastern. Well, the wind helped it, but it was still hit pretty well. Peterson put a charge into that on his own, regardless of the wind. That's his first hit of the season. And it's a big one, doubles the lead. It closes the book on Sullivan, who allows four runs in four and a third. So Jake Rosen now to the plate. First pitch, ground ball, third. Buck in, makes the play on the run. Hogan scoops it for out number three. So a five spot here at the top of the fifth for the Huskies. The Bulls looking to cut into that lead. When we return, it's 6 nothing Northeast. And you're listening to baseball on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon.
So a big top of the fifth inning for the Northeastern Huskies as they now lead the USF Bulls 6 nothing here at the USF Baseball Stadium alongside Jim Locke, I'm Jay Retcher. Appreciate everybody for tuning in today. Bulls looking for a spark here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And I think that's kind of a recurring theme with this team here through five and a half games so far. First pitch in there for a called strike to Cantu, the left fielder. Grounded out to first in the third inning. Coach Billy Mole looking for a spark. Who is going to be that catalyst for this Bulls offense? He's still trying to find the right combinations. But I still think this team lacks a little bit of an identity here. They're trying to figure it out on the fly. That ball's down. Last year, you kind of had an idea what was going on. You knew Kyle Phillips and Joe Janord and the leadership that they brought. Looking for some leadership to step up here. And that ball's up and away. Three and one. And a good way to cut into this lead would be a leadoff hitter on. Let's see if Cantu can be that catalyst. That ball's cut on a miss, strike two. Cantu, as Jim articulated before, getting his first start since the opening game of the season. Trying to find a way on here against Murphy. That ball's fouled back. Kyle Murphy, a really good job so far for Northeastern through four innings, four plus innings now, only giving up one hit, two walks. There's a 3-2. That ball's away. Ball four. So a good job there by Daniel Cantu getting on base. You don't got to get them all back in this inning. Just cut into the lead. Put up a little bit of a crooked number. Get two or three runs here. Get yourself right back into the ball game. Still a lot of baseball left to be played. That'll bring up Dylan Besnier, the freshman right fielder for the Bulls. Struck out swinging his first time up in the third inning. First pitch to Besnier, cut on and missed strike one. Besnier having a little bit of trouble with the breaking ball. We saw that in the first inning, or the, excuse me, his first time up. We see it again there against Murphy. So I wouldn't be surprised if he saw a steady diet of breaking balls here until he can prove he can hit him or lay off him. There's a breaking ball again, fouled away. 0-2. Oh That's got to be the biggest adjustment, Jim, for a freshman coming in and you may not see a guy that can throw as many breaking balls for strikes or even make him competitive pitches at the high school level here as a freshman, especially as at a D1 level. It's a big adjustment at times. Here's the 0-2. Breaking ball in. A much better swing there from Besnier who stayed in there and fouled it back. Softball update. The Bulls playing 12th ranked Tennessee and USF down one to nothing in the top of the sixth. Tight game there for the Bulls. Here's the 0-2 to Besnier. And that ball's fly to right field. Carrying back. Goes Costello towards the line. And he makes a jumping play and hops over the railing for the outs. And Cantu does a good job of going back to first and tagging up. Well, it was a terrific catch. We've talked a lot wow, today okay. about the wind, and that was blowing the ball away from Costello. That fence out there is more of a retaining wall in foul territory. It comes up about chest high and Costello just jackknifed himself on that going over the fence to make the catch. Great job of hanging on, a terrific play. And it looked like the umpire signaled that Cantu was gonna be awarded second base, I believe. From him going over the wall there, possibly he gets the base. Could be wrong, but we'll check between games for sure. So there's a runner in scoring position, one away back to the top of the line of Dante Mitchell, the Bulls center fielder. Murphy deals, breaking ball, down and away, 1-0. It's a really nice play from Costello. The ball's pretty unforgiving. I know it's not the biggest wall there, but still, <laughs> it didn't tickle, that's for sure. So 1-0 to the Bulls leadoff hitter. Fastball in there for a called strike, one and one. Mitchell so far in the day, he struck out swinging in the first, walked in the third. You get that speed on the bases, certainly cause havoc. Bulls hoping that Dante can find a way on here. Here's the one and one. Pitch, cut on, miss strike two. Murphy doing such a good job 
keeping the Bulls hitters off balance. Only one hit for the USF offense today. Murphy doing a good job of mixing up the timing, working in and out, elevating the fastball, and then dropping a breaking ball in there to switch that eye level. Here's the one, two. Fastball inside corner, strike three. Mitchell thought it was off the plate in. Murphy hit his location. That's his second strikeout of the day. And it's two away now for Jordan Santos. Santos, two strikeouts as well today. The Bulls looking for some kind of spark. Even just dropping a, just a little blooper in left field, right field, something. To score Cantu just to get the Bulls on the board, just to wash that zero off the scoreboard. Ball one taken in for Jordan Santos, the designated hitter on the day. Jordan, one of the more patient hitters that the Bulls have. He's not a guy that's going to press. That's exactly what the Bulls need, some patience here. Just do the little things, get right back in this game. Here's the 1-0. The Bulls take it for a strike, 1-1. One one. Jordan didn't like that when he thought that ball was up. Ray Chamberlain, home plate umpire, did not agree. J.D. Ducca, the second baseman, on deck. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Santos. Ball's cut on and missed strike two. So Santos having a little bit of trouble picking up the baseball today. Hopefully he can rectify that here. Bulls needing some magic here with two outs. The Northeastern right-hander sets and deals. Cut on ground ball to second base. Holzwasser comes up with it, throws it over to first for the out. So the Bulls remain off the scoreboard in the run column, and we head to the sixth inning. Northeastern six, USF zero. You're listening to baseball and USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Hey, Bulls fans, turn your attention to the home dugout for today's Coca-Cola Cornhole Challenge. Today we have. Alex and Tyler competing for a poke. Each contestant will have three throws to make it into the hole. The person who makes the most will be our winner. Good luck. Welcome back to the USF Baseball Stadium, top of the sixth here. USF trails Northeastern 6 nothing. Ryan Kirkring back on the mound for the Bulls. Jeff Costello, the right fielder for Northeastern, leads off. First pitch swing and ground ball to third. Dylan Buck makes the play, throws across the diamond for out number one. Costello quickly out. We were going to talk about how nice that play was that he made last inning, but... Swinging on the first pitch, grounds out. We're going to have to move on. Teddy Boday, the catcher for the Huskies, stepping in. Here's the catcher, number 33, Teddy Boday. And Boday, one for two on the day, takes a first pitch strike. Boday struck out in the second, singled and scored in the fifth. There's the 0 1, cut on and missed strike two. So Kirkring already much better than we saw last inning. Working quickly, getting ahead of hitters. That's what you have to do to be successful out of the pen. And there's a fly ball to shallow left. Cantu in. Looks like Bello back, and he'll make the grab in shallow left field. That ball off the end of the bat. A good job by Alex Bello. We talked about that shallow pop that Cantu caught a couple innings ago. Bello was all over that one, and he makes the grab in shallow left for out number two. We don't have a real big sample on Orion Kirkering so far, but one thing that does kind of stand out. He's a different guy with nobody on base. Yeah, for sure. First pitch cut on and missed by Spencer Smith, the shortstop in the nine hole for Northeastern. Great job by Kirkering getting ahead in all three batters so far this inning. 
Pitch number two out in the way, one and one. 6-9-1 for Northeastern, 0-1-1 for the Bulls. Second pitch in there for a called strike, 1-2. and two. So good job by Kirkering. 1-2 Cal to Spencer Smith, the shortstop. Cut on a miss, strike three. So a really good inning there from Orion Kirkering. When we head to the bottom of the sixth. The Bulls still looking for a spark on offense. Let's see if they can do that. We'll talk more baseball when we come back. You're listening to USF Bulls Unlimited presented by Marathon. Welcome back to Bottom of the sixth here at the USF Baseball Stadium and a new pitcher on the mound for Northeastern. Senior right-hander Brian Rodriguez in now for the Huskies. And the Bulls have to be pretty happy. No more Kyle Murphy. Kyle Murphy has had himself one heck of a game today. The Bulls offense still looking for a spark. There'll be three, four, five. J.D. Ducka, Riley Hogan, and Jake Sullivan slated to hit for the Bulls. They're looking at Brian Rodriguez. He's made one appearance so far this year. Two innings, three hits, two runs, one strikeout, and a nine earn run average. So Dutka on the day so far, strikeout and a walk a really nice inning from Ryan Kirker in there in the top half. You can see that the Bulls, the Bulls can kind of piggyback off of that, some of that momentum and make a dent in this Huskies lead. Bulls first game of two today against Northeastern. Let's see if they can make a comeback here. First pitch swing, cut on and missed. Strike one. Final stat line on Murphy, five innings pitched, one hit, three walks, eight Ks, 97 pitches, 61 for strikes. Next pitch, next pitch taken high and away, one and one. Two wild pitches for Murphy. I mean, you look at just one hit, no runs. Those are the most important numbers out of all of them. That ball's cut on, foul straight back, one and two for Dutka. Trying to find a way on here. You got the leadoff hitter on. Last inning with Cantu, unable to push him across. And that's a key for this Bulls offense. When you're trying to, when you're struggling to score runs, got to get those leadoff hitters on. That ball's down two and two. Five innings so far for the Bulls. Only one runner, or excuse me, one leadoff hitter has gotten on. And that was last inning with Cantu, and they weren't able to push him across. Dutka looking to find a way on. That ball's taken high and away. Three and two. some kind of spark here just put some of the pressure I think you can and we saw that we talked about it last weekend with Barris we saw it on that ground ball to Smith a couple innings ago put the pressure on them that ball's cut on fly to shallow right field Costello out there makes the grab for the first out so that'll bring up the Bulls first baseman Riley Hogan Riley flew out to center in the first struck out swinging in the fourth He's a guy who's popping his bat. And that wind blowing out to right. We saw that with the home run for Pearson a couple innings ago. If Riley can get one into that jet stream, that thing would be way out of here. There's the first pitch. 
cut on line drive down the left field line. He went the opposite way, and that thing's foul. 6-9-1 and one for Northeastern, 0-1-1 and one for the Bulls. Jay Retro, Jim Lauk here with you. First game of two here at the USF Baseball Stadium. Appreciate you joining us and hanging with us today. That ball's up and in, 1-1. One and one. Gotta love doubleheaders with baseball. You don't see that in any other sport. You're playing multiple games, at least at the professional, majority of the time at the collegiate level unless you're playing in some sort of tournament. That ball's taken down two and one. I don't get it when people say baseball games are too long. I don't know, I like it. It's a little different. Everything else is so fast paced nowadays. That ball's taken high and away three and one. I just love that baseball, there's no time limit. You could be down six nothing with one out in the sixth or two outs in the ninth. You still have an opportunity to come back. You can't really say that about many other sports. That ball's line drive, base hit, left field. So a nice job on a 3-1 pitch there by Hogan. Laces one to left field for a one-out single. Really like that outside pitch. He yeah. took it the other way for a guy who has a lot of pop and can hit home runs. The ability and the desire to take a ball the opposite field is a really good sign. And that's one of the things, a little bit too much hero ball at the plate. Guys taking too big of swings. Cut it down just a little bit, put the ball in play. Good things happen. That's exactly what you saw there from Hogan. That'll bring up Jake Sullivan, one for two on the day. Hit the ball hard both times up. Let's see if he can do it again here. That breaking ball down, one and oh. Yeah, nice Jake Sullivan line drive to right center field here. The crowd just itching to cheer for something here today. Such a nice day for baseball. Not much of a lead from Hogan off first. Second pitch to Sullivan is away. Yeah, really got to be careful on the base pass, I think, at this point, Jay. You're down well, six, sure. and yep. one extra base isn't going to help very much. You just got to make sure you don't make an out on the bases. That's a good point, Jim. 2-0 pitch to Sullivan. Good hack there. Fouls are straight back, 2-1. and one. I hate when people say, your run doesn't count. Well, I think every run counts, but just think when you're talking about priorities. Just kind of take it within the flow of the game. Don't be the reason why you're giving outs away. So here's the 2-1, the Sullivan. High, 3-1. and one. Dylan Buck waiting on deck. Bulls looking for some traffic on the traffic on the base pass. Just get into this Northeastern bullpen. That should be one of the keys for this team. First of three games in this series, two games today. That ball's taken, ball four. So a couple of runners here, and you're starting to hear some murmurs. In the stands, some excitement here for the USF offense. And pitching coach taking a walk out to the mound. So a couple of runners on here with one away for the USF offense. Dylan Buck stepping to the plate, looking for his first hit of the day. He hit that ground ball, the shortstop that Smith couldn't handle in the fourth. To give you an idea of how much the Bulls offense has struggled, this is the first time all day that USF has had multiple runners on base. We're in the sixth. Some good hitters in this lineup, Jim. I just I think they're still trying to find their way. They're still trying to find what works for them. I think Coach Mull as well, trying to find what, the, you know, what combinations work the best. You mentioned earlier on this game, Dante Mitchell started towards the bottom of the lineup. He's leading off today. And I'll correct that. They did have runners at first and third oh, after right. the error on the buck play in the fourth, but couldn't push any across. Still hasn't happened as much as you would like. Got that right. Here's Dylan Buck. First pitch, break a ball in there for a called strike, 0 and 1. Dylan grounded out to second. In the second. Just looking for a hit here. Push across the first run of the day for the Bulls. USF looking for anything here in the bottom of the six, trailing by six. The ball's down one and one. Pretty straight away defense for Northeastern. Center fielder just a shade to the left side. Right fielder shade to the right. 
big gap in right center field. Let's see if Dylan can hit it. That ball's taken away. A nice block there by Baudet behind the plate. He doesn't block that ball. Both runners are moving out, but he does do a good job of keeping the ball in front of him. Two and one. Alex Bello, the USF shortstop, waiting on deck. Start to see a couple of infielders throwing the baseball outside of the USF dugout there. Buck takes that ball down, three and one. So it looks like a couple of guys starting to get a little warm there in the Northeastern bullpen. But sometimes that's what you need to get back in the game. You need a, a walk here, a base hit here. It doesn't always have to be pretty. Here's the 3-1 to Buck. Cut on a miss, strike two. Buck trying to hit that one to Corbett Stadium. He swings through it, and now the count is full. Hogan off second, he singled with one out. Jake Sullivan followed that up with a walk. He leads off at first. Here's the 3-2. There's a base hit right field, Dylan Buck. Hogan will stop at third. And Buck, very similar to what he did the first at bat, a nice inside out swing, hits it in that 3-4 hole, and now it's bases loaded for Alex Bello. Right-hander getting loose for Northeastern, but he's just starting, so this is gonna be Rodriguez yeah, for, I would think, at least one more batter. They're gonna hit for Bello here with Cortez. Critical moment of the game. Bulls have a chance to get right back into this. And you see, it looks like he's there. Cantu's still on deck, so okay, it looks like he'll be up next. But Julio Cortez, we saw how good he was last year in situations just like this. So let's see if the decision by Coach Mole to go with Cortez over Cantu, or excuse me, Cortez over Bella will pay off. First pitch to Cortez. Line drive right back to the pitcher. He snares it and throws it to first for the double play. And just that kind of day for the USF offense. We head to the seventh inning. You're listening to baseball right here on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Well, the Bulls in the bottom half of the inning, no runs, but two hits, no errors, and two left on base. Alex Bellow will be on the answer to our Herd Perks trivia. USF Baseball has competed in 13 NCAA championships. Ooh. Adidas is a brown partner. Just one of those days, right? Let me come back and do a re and toss it. Okay, cool. Yep. Count on Adidas for one of the highest level. Adidas here to create. Bulls fans, right now you can get five cents off every gallon of fuel every day with Make It Count rewards from Marathon. To sign up, just visit makeitcount.com slash radio or download the free app. Offer valid only at participating Marathon locations. Marathon, fueling the American spirit. So we're back here at top of the seventh inning. The Bulls looked like they were going to cash in on a nice rally there, but Julio Cortez, the pinch hitter, Lines one straight back to Rodriguez. He snares it, throws it over to Di Loretto. So first for the double play. Sometimes it just seems like uh, you have days like that. You have games like that where you get so close. You're on the precipice of scoring a run. And then boom, it's thwarted. Top of the seventh, top of the lineup, Scott Holzwasser steps in. Takes the first pitch high, 1-0. and Ryan Kirkering back on the mound for the Bulls. Great inning for him last inning, 1-2-3. That second pitch in there for a call strike, one and one. Nick Gonzalez to shortstop with Bello out of the game. Cut on a miss, strike two. Kirk, uh, Holzwasser, excuse me, he walked in the first and scored, flew out to left in the third, and then singled and scored in the fifth. Here's the one, two. That ball's popped up in the infield. Dylan Buck calling it. 
right by the pitcher's mound, and he'll make the grab for the first out. That'll bring up the center fielder for the Huskies, Jared Dupree. He's had himself one heck of a game so far, Jim. Three for three on the day. Singled in the first and the fifth, doubled in the third. He also scored there in the fifth inning as well. He's kind of been right in the middle of everything for this Huskies offense. First pitch called strike one on the outside corner. I like to see Kirkering these last two innings. A lot more confident right around the plate. And that ball's hit to center field. Mitchell in. And he'll make the grab for out number two. And you like to see that adjustment from Kirkering. He's only a freshman from Venice High School, one of the more venerable programs, not just in the state, but in the country. I feel like he's going to be a mainstay in this USF bullpen for many years to come. Chewing up some innings for yeah, the Bulls now. Especially in a game like this one. This is a very important. That first pitch breaking ball inside 1-0 to the third baseman, Ian Fair. That breaking ball just missed 2-0. Fair two for three on the day, singled in the first and fifth, ground out the third in the third. The ball's in there, strike one, two and one. Top of the seventh here at the USF Baseball Stadium. Bulls trailing six nothing. That ball's up and in, three and one. It looks like there's some action there in the Northeastern bullpen. That ball's taken up and in. Ball four. So Fair reaches on a two out walk and that'll bring up the cleanup hitter, first baseman Corey DiLoretto. One of the few players in this Northeastern lineup that hasn't reached base today. One of three guys that hasn't done it. A couple of strikeouts for DiLoretto. Fly ball to right field sandwiched in between that. That first pitch is down one and oh. Probably be Kirk Ring's last inning. It looks like there's one guy throwing, tossing in the USF bullpen. That ball's line drive, base hit left field. Cantu's giving it a run, grabs it as soon as it bounces, it trickles away. And there goes Fair, he's gonna score. And that's a two out double for Corey DiLoretto. It's now seven nothing Northeastern. Cantu was swung a little bit towards center field and that made it a very long run for him to get into the left field corner. De Loretto hit it sharply, put it in a good spot, gets rewarded with his second RBI of the season. One of the better swings on the day for the Husky offense. Not as good as this guy's swing the last time up. Kyle Peterson, three run home run last time up in the fifth. He steps in. First pitch away, 1-0. Peterson also grounded out to the pitcher in the first and struck out looking in the fourth. Seven nothing Huskies here in the seventh. That ball's popped up back to us. There's a souvenir for a fan. That's another one the Bulls never saw. Sullivan no, he didn't never moved from no. behind the plate, and it sure wasn't lack of hustle. He just didn't know where to go, and fortunately for USF, it landed seven or eight rows up in the seats. There's the 1-1 one -one to Peterson, and there's a line drive. Base hit up the middle. Mitchell in. He's not going to have a play on DiLoretto. He scores, and it's 8 nothing Northeastern here in the top of the seventh. Four RBI day for Kyle Peterson. When you have a, a day like this where you're playing two games, you have to wonder what Coach Mull was thinking as far as lineup configuration for game two. We'll Going to see a pitching change here now, but the good thing is early in the season, they yep. do have a ton of arms. That's a good point. All right, when we come back, we'll tell you who's coming in the game. You're listening to baseball right here on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Now pitching the same of the day, the ladies don't 
Lauren Lane. Ryan Kirkering out, Carmine Lane in for the Bulls here in the top of the seventh inning. This is Carmine's second appearance on the season. An inning and two thirds, a hit, two walks and three Ks on his ledger so far. Carmine, known early on this season for his pinch hitting prowess. And also another option on the mound for Coach Mole. So we'll see if he can get the final out here in the seventh inning. 8-0 score. The Huskies lead the Bulls. Lane, a little three-quarter sidearm action. We'll see if he can come in here and do the job for USF and get the offense back up there. His one pitching performance for the Bulls was a good one. One and two-thirds scoreless in relief. One hit, couple of walks, three strikeouts, and he is hitting 286 in the batter's box. Two-way player for the Bulls, freshman, and we'll see if he can put out the fire here. Jake Rosen, the designated hitter, stepping in for the Huskies. Hal Peterson, who had the RBI single, will lead off first. Jake Rosen 0 for 3 on the day. And that first pitch is fouled straight back. Out of play. 0 and 1. Bowles with a couple of more cracks on offense here. To, even if you can't come all the way back to tie and win the game, at least give you some positive vibes going into game two tonight. That pitch is down and in, 1 and 1. I think these are character building type games here where Coach Mole's looking up and down this dugout and also looking out on the field and seeing how guys are acting right now. Who's still in this game? Who's still battling? Who's the guy you're going to be able to go to battle with when things aren't going so well? The ball's up 2-1. and one. Good pitch. The ball's down 3-1. and one. Well, one thing you got to do here, and it's not rocket science, you got to throw strikes yes, here. Yes, yeah. Well, that's the same thing, too, as far as looking at the dugout, also looking at the bullpen. Who can you go to and have a guy that's going to come in here and let the other team put the ball in play? And that ball's grounded foul outside third base. Full count. Carmine Lane getting a lot of opportunities here early on in the season. Just game six on the year. We've already seen what we can do with the plate. You mentioned 286 average. Never have enough reliable arms out of the pen, especially on a day like today when you're playing a pair. Full count, that ball's taken high and in, ball four. So Peterson, who is off with the pitch, he will remain at second base. Rosen reaches base for the first time today, and now the final guy in the Huskies lineup that hasn't reached today, Jeff Costello, the right fielder. Talked about that really nice play he made a couple innings ago over the wall and right big hole at second base again. Three infielders on the left side. First pitch to him. Take it for a call strike. 0-1. Oh, grounded out to second in the second. Flew out to center in the fourth. Grounded out to third in the sixth. Very open stance for Costello. All the way to the back of the batter's box. Here's the 0-1. He takes it in there for a call strike. 0-2. Oh, Good job by Carmine Lane getting ahead. And interesting with the Bulls having three infielders on the left side, you have Hogan at first playing relatively close to the bag. With two outs, you would think he'd be playing a little deeper, or at least a little bit closer to fill up that hole in the 3-4 hole. That pitch is cut on and fouled straight back. Costello was measuring that spot yeah, on the right was, side of the infield was. that time. You could see him trying to drive that ball to the opposite field. As a hitter, got to look at that and go, give me something out over the plate and just fillet one out there. You don't even have to hit it hard. A breaking ball in there for a called strike three. A nice pitch there by Carmine Lane. And Costello remains the only batter in the Huskies lineup who has failed to reach base today. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Bulls trailing 8 nothing. You're listening to the baseball right here on USF Bulls Unlimited presented by Marathon.
Take me up to the ball. Welcome back to the USF Baseball Stadium alongside Jim Lauk. Jay Retcher here with you. Bulls trailing the Northeastern Huskies 8-0 in the bottom of the seventh inning. And leading off for the Bulls, it'll be Daniel Cantu, the left fielder. Grounded out sharply in the third. And he walked in the fifth. Cantu, one of those players that is looking to make an impact in this young season, getting a second start, first one since opening day, takes that first pitch high, 1-0. Rodriguez back on the mound again for Northeastern. Second pitch in there for a called strike, 1-1. One and one. Rodriguez very close to giving up the first run today. But he's able to snare that line drive off the bat of pinch hitter Julio Cortez and fire to first for the double play to end the sixth. Cantu cuts on and swing and missed on that last one. Here's uh, one and two now. This Bulls offense just struggling to put good at bats together. Here's the one two. Ball's taken up and away. Two and two. Dylan Besnier, the freshman right fielder, waiting on deck. 11 and 1 for Northeastern, 0 3 and 2 for the Bulls. That ball's cut on a miss, strike three. Cantu goes down swinging for out number one. That'll bring up the aforementioned Besnier. Bulls right fielder, 0 for 2 on the day, struck out swinging, then the third flew out to right in the fifth. Looks like. Guys warming up in the Northeastern bullpen has settled down just a little bit there. It looks like this will be Rodriguez's, at least this inning, if not this one in the next. And first pitch in there for a called strike, 0-1. Besnier very straight up. Swings at that ball in the dirt, strike two. Got a close stance. Guys stand straight up, feet very close together. I wonder if that's something that has to be changed. You want him to be tall, but I wonder if that's part of the reason why he has trouble picking up these breaking balls. And that ball, he lays off of that one. Did he go? Yes, he did. That was a very questionable call down the line for Rick Darby. Besnier hops up, did not like it. It didn't look like he went, but that's why the umpires get paid to do their job, and that's going to be out number two here in the seventh. And we talked at the outset of the broadcast about the concern over the amount of strikeouts for the Bulls there. Back in double digits in this game now. That's the 10th of the afternoon. Back to the top of the lineup for the Bulls. Dante Mitchell, the center fielder. First pitch off the outside corner, 1-0. Mitchell's got two of those strikeouts. He has a walk in the third sandwiched in between. Here's the 1-0. The ball's in. Almost got a piece of Mitchell there, but doesn't 2-0. Looking for some positive momentum. Ball's cut on, foul straight back, two and one. Beautiful day for baseball. It just seems to get nicer and nicer as the days go on. Pretty good turnout for a Saturday here in Tampa Bay. That ball's down just a touch, three and one. And here's some loud cheering on the softball field, and we can only hope that it's good for the USF Bulls. 
That ball's on the inside corner, strike two, so a full count for Mitchell. Rodriguez doing a really good job getting ahead of hitters, striking out the first two. He's one pitch away from striking out the side. Here's the 3-2. Foul straight back. Give me some good news, Jim Lauk. Well, fiddling with the computer here. <laughs> we need some good news. It was one to nothing, the yeah. Bulls trailing Tennessee. Here's the 3-2. That ball's taken up, so Mitchell walks. So that's his second walk of the day, and that'll bring up Jordan Santos, the designated hitter. He's 0 for 3 on the day, a couple of strikeouts and a ground out. And happy to tell you, the Bulls scored two in the bottom of the seventh. Oh, wow. Which makes it a 2-1 to one win, and that will make their third win over a top 20 team this season. Wow, how impressive. Here's the first pitch to Santos. He takes the fastball in there, strike one. Looks like a Kendall Williams home run. Oh, man. No short of drama for the USF Bulls softball team this year, huh? Holy smokes. Here's the 0-1 to Santos. He foul tips that one straight back, and quickly ahead 0-2 is Rodriguez. Looks like, again, and I'm just trying to get this off the score here, but it looks like it came with two outs in the bottom of the seventh. Bulls up, horns up there. Good stuff. Here's the 0-2 to Santos. And that ball gets away from the catcher, Bodet. Mitchell scampers to second base. It's kind of a tweener right there. I'm going to go with pass ball on that one, too. I don't, I'm not sure if that one hit the ground before it hit his glove. But regardless, runner in scoring position now for Santos. A 1-2 count here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Northeastern leading USF 8-0. Rodriguez sets and deals. That ball's fouled straight back by Santos. He stays alive. Big gap in that 5-6 hole. Smith is doing his best to keep Mitchell close there at second base so he doesn't score. But when you do that, you also limit your range. For a guy that likes the ball away in Santos, that might work in his favor. There's the 1-2. There's a fly ball to left field. Back goes Peterson. Back, back, just shy of the warning trap. He makes the grab, and that'll do it for the Bulls here in the seventh inning. Eight nothing Northeastern. We head to the eighth. Jim Reed takes the play-by-play -play duties. You're listening to baseball right here on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Today, 13 kids will be diagnosed with a brain tumor. The USS Baseball and Coach Willie Bowler are dedicated to the fight to end pediatric cancer. Today, Coach and his team have raised $69,000 for first cancer. This year, we're asking for fans to pledge a donation for every strikeout during the month of March and April. Visit the marketing table at the entrance to donate and learn more. Well, a big day of baseball here is not off to a great start for the Bulls. It's 8 to nothing Northeastern as we go to the 8th inning. The Florida Lottery has contributed more than $33 billion to support education. Your ticket purchase helps Florida students have a brighter future. Follow at Florida Lottery on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Carmine Lane. Third of the Bulls pitchers today remains on the hill. He'll face eight, nine, and one. Teddy Bodet to lead it off. He is one for three. And he chops one toward third. That is fielded by Dylan Buck, but it'll be a foul ball. And it's 0-1. Eight runs, 11 hits, one error for Northeastern. No runs, three hits, two errors for the Bulls. The Huskies scored a run in the first. But the inning that really hurt was the fifth when they put up five runs. Then they tacked on two more in the seventh. And as a result, 
a steep climb for the Bulls here in the eighth inning. No balls, one strike to Beaudet. Colin Sullivan started, went four and a third. He is the pitcher of record. Orion Kirkering after that. Breaking ball doesn't break, and Beaudet is hit by the pitch. Leadoff man on for the Huskies. That'll bring up Spencer Smith, who is one for two, a single, a sacrifice, and a strikeout. Game two will be about 45 minutes after the conclusion of this one. For those of you with us on USF Bulls Unlimited, we'll have Michael Kelly's Bull Speed Ahead podcast for you between games. Pitches outside, corner, called strike 0-1. Few clouds rolling in and the sun is behind them a little bit now. Most people still wearing coats and sweatshirts. Mm -hmm. Blowing away for a ball. It warmed up quite a bit from this morning, but it's by no means warm. The sun just peeked behind the clouds. You could feel a little bit of a drop in the temperature just here in the booth. One and one pitch to Smith. Outside two and one. In game two for the Bulls, Jack Jaziak, who pitched a really strong seven innings in his collegiate debut, will get the start for USF. 2-1 pitch, outside 3-1. and one. The Bulls are going to need a more, just a better effort on both sides of the ball, though, Jim. I think offensively, put the ball in play more. Wouldn't be surprised if you saw some wholesale changes to the lineup and then the pitchers have to get ahead and stay ahead. 3-1 pitch on the way from Lane. Ball four, runners at first and second with nobody out. And I think, too, as much as you know, we're talking, obviously, on the USF broadcast about the Bulls, Gotta give the Northeastern guys some credit. They are going up there, taking hacks, being aggressive. You saw a, a bunt. You've seen some steals. They're a well-coached club. They play pretty darn good defense too. And whether it's Murphy or Rodriguez, they've done a good job on the mound as well. Well, it's a team that kind of ran into a buzzsaw at yeah. Alabama in their first series. Went 0-3. Really weren't very competitive in the games there, but. They were a plus 500 team last year. They were 24 and 22. There's a high chopper grabbed by Buck, touches the bag for one out, and not quite in time for the double play at first. Great play Buck, by had Buck. To, yeah, had to really leap up and make that play, and he does get the force one out in the inning. I think Buck jumped so high that it kind of threw him off a little bit that he was able to snare that ball. And a nice job by Hogan. He doesn't get that ball, Jim. If he doesn't pick that up, that thing's going into right field. And we'll have a pitching change for the Bulls now with one out in the inning and two on base. So that'll be it for Carmine Lane. And we will see the Bulls' fourth pitcher of the afternoon momentarily. We're in the top of the eighth. Bulls trail eight to nothing on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Pitcher number four for the Bulls is going to be Joe Sanchez. 
making his third appearance all in relief, 0-1. He has worked one and one-third innings, allowed three earned runs, four hits, no walks, a couple of strikeouts. A left-hander, and he will inherit a first and second one-out situation. Get all the latest USF clothing and gifts featuring the complete line of Adidas Coach's sideline gear. The USF bookstore is open seven days a week on the USF campus. You can also shop online 24-7 at www.usouthfloridabookstore.com. First and second one out, Jared Dupree will be the batter. He's got a three-hit game going. Bulls finally got him out in his last at-bat on a fly ball to center. But prior to that, two singles and a double, and he scored a run. So Smith at second, Holzwasser at first. He was safe on the fielder's choice. And now Dupree at the plate. This is lefty against lefty here. Bulls trailing eight to nothing here in the eighth. First pitch called strike 0 and 1. Shadows starting to creep into the ballpark, not affecting anybody yet, but they've almost come up to home plate. No balls, one strike on Dupree. Swung on and missed on a breaking ball, 0-2. Yeah, Dupree's been facing right-handed pitchers. Seeing this lefty be a little bit of a, a shock to him here early on in the season. I don't know how many lefties he saw against Alabama. It was a good opportunity here. No balls, two strikes, one out in the inning. Another breaking ball, that one misses inside, one and two. I think that caught the umpire Ray Chamberlain off a little bit because that's some late break to it. Nice pitch there from Sanchez. Trying to save Carmine Lane a couple of runs. Two men on base, breaking ball, check swing, did he go? Yep. Yes, he did. And that's out number two, so Sanchez comes in and strikes out Dupree for the second out of the inning. Ian Fair now, he's scored a couple of runs, has a couple of hits and a walk. Game two, 45 minutes after this one. First pitch is low, one and oh. Fair, big guy, but he can move a little bit. We saw in that last at bat when he came in to score on the Di Loretto double down the left field line. Big guy that can move. 1 0 pitch, swung on and fouled at the plate. Sam Jacobsack will be the starter for Northeastern in game two. Was a bullpen guy last year. One start this year, it was only the fourth of his career in the first and two seasons. Breaking ball is on the outside corner, one and two. Career record four and seven, 5.67 ERA. So he will be going up against the Bulls in the second game of the doubleheader later today. One, two pitch, bounce toward third. Buck has made all the plays today. And he does so again with a strong throw across, and that's the end of the inning. No runs, no hits, couple of men left on base, and we head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Bulls trailing eight to nothing on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Center on February 26th
Jim Luck, Jay Retcher with you from the ballpark. We head to the bottom of the eighth. Bulls win, you win at Papa John's the day after a USF win. Get 50% off pizzas online or on the app when you use promo code USF wins. Plus, track your order to the door with a new Papa John's tracker. Papa John's proud supporter of USF. J.D. Dutko will lead it off for the Bulls. Softball beating Tennessee today, two to one on a two run homer in the bottom of the seventh. And they will play FIU later today. They beat FIU last night. First pitch to Dutka is a strike. And women's basketball at Memphis. Should be starting shortly. One ball, one strike to Dutka, who is 0 for 2 with a walk. Brian Rodriguez still on the hill for Northeastern. And the pitch is low. How many clutch performances are ready for the USF softball team this year? It just seems like whoever's up in that position comes up big. Popped up. This will stay in the infield. Fight in the sun. The second baseman makes the catch. Holzwasser had to make an over-the-shoulder catch in shallow right field, but he did so. And there's one away. Good play by Holzwasser there. A little bit of a wind issue as well. And this is one of the tough times where the sun starts kind of setting a little bit. That ball gets in there. Sometimes this is one of the harder times of the day to not only hit but to be able to field as well. Riley Hogan singled his last time up. He takes a strike. He's one for three on the day. Sullivan for four and a third. Kirkering for two and a third. Lane for two thirds and Sanchez for two thirds. Those have been the pitchers today. There's a breaking ball. Check swing. He went around. It might have been a strike anyways and it's 0 and 2. One out, base is empty. That pitch is outside. For Northeastern, Murphy, five innings of one hit ball. And Rodriguez, now two and a third out of the pen. Bulls with only three hits on the day. Hogan swings and misses, and there's two down. That is the 11th strikeout for Northeastern pitching. And it brings up Jake Sullivan, who is one for two, a single and a walk. The only hits in this game for the Bulls, Sullivan, a single in the fourth. Hogan, a single in the sixth. And there's one more in there, Buck, a single in the sixth as well. This one fouled off, and it's 0-1. That C&I single for Bill on there. Didn't Good read my own scorecard for a minute there. <laughs> No balls, one strike on Sullivan. Two outs in the bottom of the eighth. Pitch is low. One ball, one strike. That one low and away. Now two balls, one strike on Sullivan. Catching again for the Bulls. We'll see with the double header if they get him a game maybe at first base that's what they did last weekend caught the first two and played first base on the sunday game two one pitch out towards second nice high hop for Holzwasser. throws across in time and the bulls go down in order in the eighth we head to inning number nine and the Bulls trailing 8 to nothing on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon.
Bulls will have a new pitcher, and it's a familiar name. It's Austin Bedrado making his pitching debut. Bedrado not in the starting lineup tonight, normally an outfielder. He will be pitching for the first time this year, so Bedrado gets an opportunity to show his stuff here in the ninth. He is a right-hander. And he will try to hold Northeastern scoreless here in inning number nine. He is going to face DiLoretto, Peterson, and Rosen. DiLoretto and Peterson in particular have done a lot of damage today. Peterson, four RBIs. DiLoretto, that RBI double last time out. So Bedrado getting the warm-up tosses in. De Loretto to lead it off, doubled in a run his last time, one for four, an RBI and a run scored. So Bedrado becomes the fifth pitcher of the day for USF with another game coming, and of course the Sunday game as well. That'll be a one o'clock first pitch. Our airtime tomorrow will be 12.45. First pitch from Bedrado is outside. One ball, no strikes. Bulls do have another right-hander throwing in the bullpen, but you would expect they would like Bedrado to get these three outs. There's a shot right up the middle, base hit by De Loretto, and the beat goes on for Northeastern. That's hit number 12. They got off the bus hit today, Jim, and they have not stopped. Kyle Peterson now, two for four, homer and a single as homer really broke the game open. It was a one to nothing game after four. But Peterson's home run in the fifth capped a five run inning where the lead ballooned to six to nothing. Pitch is high, one and oh. Then he singled in a run in the seventh as well. Fastball outside 2-0, and oh. and again, you, you know, you look at the stat sheet and you don't want to draw too many conclusions for a team that had only played three games, but Peterson in that Alabama series 0 for 9 with 3 Ks. Pitch outside, and Bedrado's now behind 3-0. and oh. Coach Mole, <laughs> if he doesn't have to, he doesn't want to have to go to another arm in the bullpen. This is just a little bit of a mop-up duty here for Bedrado. Hopefully you can get out of it, keep things in perspective here. 3 0 pitch is high ball four, so Peterson draws the walk. De Loretto moves to second. And the DH, Jake Rosen, will come to the plate. He drew a walk his last time. He's hitless on the day, 0 for 3. So two on, nobody out. Yeah, it's early in the season. You have an awful lot of fresh arms. But at the same time, you got to stop it somewhere, especially when you got another nine innings coming up. Today and then another nine tomorrow, so game one of three. First pitch from Bedrado is low and away for a ball, one and oh. Not that the umpires are going to call it an eight nothing game in the top of the ninth, but Bedrado has to be careful. You make sure he comes set all the way, or they will call him for it. Fastball high, 2-0. and oh. After this series, the Bulls have three at Florida. The Northwestern series comes first next weekend. Fastball high, 3-0. and oh. Then Florida, and then got an intriguing one. One of our old Big East friends, Pittsburgh, comes oh. to town. We haven't seen the Pitt Panthers in a long time. 3-0 pitch is a strike, 3-1. Crazy game last night between Florida and Miami, 2-1 game. That went into extras. I like early on in the season, you see all the different teams from the Sunshine State playing against each other. 3-1 pitch, swung on and fouled straight back, 3-2. and two. 
already seen USF Florida State, USF Florida A&M. Florida played Jacksonville, Florida played Miami. Bulls have Bethune-Cookman coming up, Stetson, if you're looking for state of Florida teams, North Florida. <laughs> so there's a lot of them, and yeah. of course the array of northern teams coming in too. 3-2 pitch, that will get to the screen, ball four. And the bases are loaded, single walk-walk here in the ninth. And Jeff Costello is due, he's 0 for 4, struck out his last time up. Now, Karsten Whitson is coming out. Let's see if this is a pep talk or if he's going to make a move. There goes the motion. So Austin Bedrado will depart after facing three batters, and we'll have another pitching change for the Bulls. We are in the ninth. Bulls trailing 8 to nothing on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Matt Marini will be the new pitcher for USF. Making his second appearance, he took the loss in Tallahassee against Florida State, right-hander. And he will inherit a bases loaded, nobody out situation here in the top of the ninth. He'll have to try to work his way out of this jam against Jeff Costello. Costello made the defensive play of the game, no question. Yeah, he did. With a fly ball into foul territory and right on the dead run, he made the catch, hit the restraining wall, jackknifed over it, held on to the ball, and got the out. Had a great defensive play by their shortstop, Spencer Smith, too, but I think Costello's catch Probably even better than that one. Yeah, very nice play for both of those players. Well, here's Costello now. The only guy, I believe, that hasn't reached base in this lineup today for the Huskies. Struck out his last time, 0 for 4. Base is loaded, nobody out. Marini comes set. His first pitch is a strike at the knees, 0 and 1. 45 minutes between games here, and then game two of the doubleheader. Eric Sharp and Jay Retcher will have game two for you. Breaking ball misses 1 and 1. A manly performance by Mr. Retcher today going doubleheader day. Thank you, Jim. You know what? taking the day off tomorrow and the next week. One ball, <laughs> one strike. There is a breaking ball for a called strike, one and two. Yeah, I've got the game myself tomorrow, yep. so we'll look forward to that on Sunday. And then I've got a whole bunch of softball next weekend. Yep. Josh Appel will be in to carry some of the baggage on baseball. Line drive, base hit into right field. Bulls were shifting away from that, and it's going to cost them two runs. It's 10 to nothing. Costello finally finds that open spot that's been there all game, and then he gets the base hit, and he's so excited that he actually runs into first base umpire Rick Darby. Rick looks to be okay. So those runs charge to Bedrado. Bulls in the shift had Dutka over on the shortstop side of second base, and Costello just poked the ball through the traditional area there at second, and there was nobody home. 
trainer is out just to make sure that Rick Darby is okay. He hit down pretty hard. He got back up under his own power, but you want to make sure here. And Jeff Costello is over there checking on him too. Looks like he is fine to continue. And Teddy Baudet will come to the plate. He was hit by a pitch his last time. He's one for three. So it is 10 to nothing Northeastern with runners on first and second, and there is still nobody out in this inning. First pitch, high, 1-0. and oh. Marini's 1-0 pitch is a strike, 1-1 one and one on Baudet. Baudet is a redshirt junior. Franklin, New Hampshire is his hometown. And he sends a fly ball into right. Besnier is sitting under it, makes the catch. Runners will have to hold, and there's one away. Spencer Smith now walked his last time as a hit, a sacrifice, and a strikeout on the day. Also, a caught stealing was thrown out by Jake Sullivan way back in the second. Also, we mentioned it before, the really nice play at shortstop. But I think another key play of this game, Jim, was the bunt that he had, the sacrifice bunt. First pitch strike, 0-1. That came in the fifth. Yeah. Baudet opened with a single. Smith moved him up. And then they had a couple of runs in by the time Peterson got to the plate, and he hit the three-run homer. Fouled off to the left side out of play, and Marini now ahead, no balls and two strikes. Yeah, that bunt moved. Baudet up to second base, and then he scored on the Halswasser single, and then a pair of singles, and then after the deal, Loretta will strike out a three-run home run to Kyle Peterson. Kind of that was pretty much all she wrote for that inning. 0-2 pitch it is outside, one and two. Bringing the sixth pitcher for the Bulls today. Some up and down performances by every player that's jogged out of that bullpen today for the Bulls, unfortunately. Pitchers of record are the starters. The 1-2 is rolled up the first baseline and foul. And it'll stay one ball, two strikes on Smith. He is the number nine hitter for Northwestern. He's from Wellesley, Massachusetts. Northeastern, if you're not familiar with them, they're from Boston. Getting a little warm weather in. There's a fly ball out toward right. This should be routine. Catch is made. And that's out number two. And you could tell by Besnier's reaction after catching the ball, he thought it was three. Yeah, he, did. he was jogging in. And only when he realized yeah, nobody else was coming in did he throw the ball in the infield. There is a big screen behind his head that tells him how many outs there are. But, Jim, when you're out there in the middle of a pitching change and after a bunch of walks, it's. Uh, you know, no excuse, but you can kind of see, all right, that's why he had a little bit of a lapse in judgment. Didn't cost him. No, nope, no harm done. Two outs in the inning. Holzwasser now takes a strike 0-1. He reached on a fielder's choice his last time. He has scored a couple of runs and officially is one for four on the day. Another strike 0-2. So Marini did allow two inherited runners to score, but aside from that, he is restored order a bit here in the ninth inning. 0-2 pitch, grounded out towards short. Gonzalez will toss it the short way and the inning is over. But two more for Northeastern and we go to the bottom of the ninth and the Bulls have a big hole to dig out of. They trail 10 to nothing on USF Bulls Unlimited presented by Marathon.
So we go to the bottom of the ninth inning and the Bulls trailing 10 to nothing here. No changes on the mound for Northeastern. They're going to try to have Rodriguez finish it here. Dylan Buck, Nick Gonzalez, and Daniel Cantu are the scheduled hitters. Buck to lead it off. He had a single his last time. He's one for three. First pitch is a strike. The single by Buck in the sixth to this point is the last hit of the day for the Bulls. Here's a bouncer to third. Throw across by Ian Fair will retire Buck and there's one out in the Bulls ninth. That'll bring up Nick Gonzalez. This will be his first at bat of the game. Alex Bello started Cortez, hit for him in the sixth with the bases loaded, lined back to the pitcher, and wound up hitting into a double play. So now Gonzalez, and he takes a pitch outside. Gonzalez at 231 on the season, he's three for 13. 1 0 pitch is a called strike, 1 and 1. One out, base is empty. Bulls down 10 to nothing in the bottom of the ninth. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That's low and away for a ball. Make a nice play there to end the top of the ninth inning. Ball comes up on him. And you can tell they've seen more ground balls the USF defense has. Line drive to the right side and foul. That'll get into the right field corner and it'll be two and two on Gonzalez. Daniel Cantu in the on deck circle for the Bulls. Three hits today for USF, all singles. Two, two pitch. High chopper, he's got a chance to beat this out. It will be an infield hit. For Gonzalez. Boy, he killed a few worms with that one. Just <laughs> drove it into the ground right in front of home plate. Came up so high that Spencer Smith, the shortstop, didn't even make a throw to first. I thought that ball was going to be Fair's ball at third, but somehow Smith called it off. I originally thought it was going to be Rodriguez. That Fair, and no Smith is going to take it. He doesn't make the play, and Gonzalez picks up the fourth knock of the night for the Bulls. Infield hit. He's at first. Here's Daniel Cantu. He pops one to the left side and foul. It'll be 0-1 on the Bulls' left fielder. Still looking for his first collegiate hit. He is 0-2 for 2 today. Did have a walk back in the fifth. One out, bottom of the ninth. Again, a great win for softball today. Two to one over Tennessee. A two out, two run homer in the bottom of the seventh wins it. Gonzalez off with a pitch, fouled off 0 and 2. Now well, you can wonder why down 10 you would try to advance a base, but I'd look at that and I think just trying to create a little yeah. bit of spark and even the slightest bit of momentum for game two it makes a lot of sense to me. 0-2 pitch, he's off again. They were not holding him, and he'll go into second without a throw. The pitch is outside one and two. So we'll see if they call that a stolen base or indifference, but either way, Gonzalez moves up. Yeah, I think no covering, no holding him on, no covering at second, and also no throw to me. Usually when you have all those three things, it'd be a defensive indifference. One ball, two strikes on Cantu. And the pitch outside now two and two. Bottom of the ninth inning, ten to nothing. Rodriguez comes set. Here is the two two pitch. Just missed with a fastball inside. Now it's full, three and two. Good take. That looked like it got a lot of the plate, but. And again, if oh, you're gosh. the Bulls, I don't know if you got 10 in your back pocket here in this inning, but anything you can do to make this feel a little better heading into game two would be a positive. Three, two pitch. 
Called strike three, outside corner, two down. Dylan Besnier now, 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. Gonzalez at second, two outs in the inning. Gonzalez with a pretty big lead off a of second. Holzwasser is taking a couple steps toward the bag to try to keep him close, but he's not terribly concerned as there's a strike to Besnier, 0 and 1. have been out hit 13 to 4. No balls, one strike on the Bulls right fielder. That's fouled straight back. And now it's 0 and 2. Bulls down to their last strike. And a very good relief appearance for Brian Rodriguez. If he gets this out, he will have thrown four innings out of the pen. So he'd qualify for a save because of the number of innings that he threw. Swung on and missed by Besnier. They will have to throw down the first. They do, and the game is over. And Northeastern comes in with quite the dominating performance, taking game one of the doubleheader from the Bulls today. Final score, 10 to nothing. Northeastern wins it. We'll have the post game, the final totals, when we return on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. To fire it or not? Yes, yes. yes. USF baseball is back in action to continue this double header against Northeastern in 45 minutes. Well, a tough one today for the Bulls. They fall to Northeastern by a score of 10 to nothing. 10 runs, 13 hits, one error for the Huskies. No runs, four hits, two errors for USF. The winning pitcher, Kyle Murphy, he's one and one. The loser is Colin Sullivan, he is 0 and one. Brian Rodriguez gets the save, his first one home run in the game, a three run shot by Kyle Peterson his first of the year that really helped to break it open in this game. So Jay and Bulls have some bouncing back to do. It's all about mental toughness now as they get ready for game two. Yeah, and I think one of the good things about this loss is that there's another game coming up in 45 minutes where the players can kind of put it right behind them directly and just, hey, it's just one game. And I'm curious to see what Coach Mull does when it comes to the offensive lineup, Jim. Too many strikeouts we've seen so far, not just in this game, but this season. Hopefully some other guys can get in there and, and shake things up a bit. All right, we've got about 45 minutes between games. Derek Sharp and Jay will have game two of the doubleheader for you coming up. But right before then, we've got a treat for you. We've got a special airing of Michael Kelly's Bull Speed Ahead featuring USF's head football coach, Jeff Scott. So looking forward to that one between games here and then game two in about 45 minutes or so. That'll do it for game one. Bulls fall 10 to nothing for Jay Retcher, Jim Lauk saying good afternoon from the USF Baseball Stadium on USF Bulls Unlimited presented by Marathon.
plug into the computer to okay. fire it on the other end. That's the way I'm playing. Do you even want the tape of this? I mean, nope. I'm, glad to, I'm glad to send it, but it sure doesn't have much value. Do it like at your convenience tonight. All right, it was a battery burner for nothing. No, I already texted Steve about 30 minutes ago, like, don't look for any edits. There's no need to replay this. Okay. <laughs> I had the uh, two computer format here because I couldn't stand to not have stat broadcast. No, stuff. that's okay. And I'm too scared to minimize that. <laughs> Try to stay close. You don't. You don't have to do this. And like I told Jay, um, I think we all do really good without much superfluous talk. But got to be doubly careful here because we can't control this. We got the buzzing when we tried to plug in there, so this is going straight into the TriCaster, completely bypassing that. But the bad news is that means we can't control. if you would, I'll need it for tomorrow.
was good. I was listening. Yikes. I tried it. Yikes. Lipstick being fixed now. You were really trying. <laughs> You never know that ball would have knocked down right to the shortstop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you never yeah. know. And they went full uni change. Did they? Well, they just changed the top. So here it is.
He didn't have a pronunciation guide either. Like this is the reason. Like this is one of the reasons. You just get smoked and that's the lineup you put out. Oof. Same. What kind of message is this? Yeah. The only names you need to know are Jared Dupree. And uh Thank you for your cooperation. So, what do you think? In order to ensure safety, we're going to be 
Give him three catches. As a reminder, the use of video recording flash photography is strictly prohibited and is now for removal from the USF baseball stadium. Thank you for your cooperation. Okay. Welcome, Bulls Nation. As we continue to strive for athletic excellence, we need to rely upon the strong support of you, our incredible fans. As an NCAA and American Athletic Conference institution, USF is responsible for the actions of its student athletes, coaches, and staff, and also our fans. As such, we ask for your help in creating a championship environment for our student athletes by maintaining a culture of compliance with NCAA One rules and regulations. Even if you have intentioned action, on your part, it could be considered a violation of NCAA rules. It could be about a minute to the first pitch. Nice. The player's ability to play. I got the billboard over here. As a reminder to all spectators, Pete, please be alert at all times during tonight's game that baseball can fly in the seating area. If you find a foul ball, please return it to the marketing table near the entrance and receive a voucher to get a free fountain drink or candy from the concession stand. The folks fans, Dave and Busters is giving out t-shirts and gameplay coupons for every USF strikeout. Dave and Busters and Brandon is your home for baseball. Watch your team one on one of the 52 TVs David Busters, eat, drink, play, and watch.
And this is Eric Sharp back live from USF Baseball Stadium reminding you that we will be bringing you game two between the USF Bulls and the Northeastern Huskies in just a few minutes. And the Bulls hoping for better luck behind the plate for Narna Jack Jasiak in game two because game one did not go well. As a matter of fact, the Bulls lose it by the score of 10 to nothing. It'll be yours truly alongside of Joey Rector for the call of game two. And we'll have that for you in just a couple of minutes listening live again to USF Baseball going up against Northeastern. This is USF Bulls Unlimited presented by Marathon. Holswasser, Holswasser, shoot. Holswasser. 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 <clears throat> Sounds like a surgical procedure. On your hold. Jim Lauk out of the booth. Get out of here. After his poor performance in the first game. It was all on him. <laughs> yes, that's what we're going with. Jim Lauk and Jay Retcher were on the mic for game one. It'll be Jay Retcher, who has not moved. 
I'm, I'm very impressed with your superstitions. Actually, you need to do a lot of moving, which you did. You went to the concession stands. Tell people, tell people. I did. You are a big concession stands person. I am, and you know what? I went against the grain. I didn't eat the food that we had here in the media center here. I went down to the concession to try to shake things up, sat in my chair, spun around three times counterclockwise to change the vibe for the first game. Well, anything that would work, and uh, after what happened in the first game, and the story has been basically lack of offense for the Bulls all year long, and unfortunately that did not change in the first game of this doubleheader against the Northeastern team, which did not win its, any of its games in its first series against Alabama and got shut out the first time, but their offense got cranky. Now, we should be fair, uh, Northeastern, first of all, played a good opponent, and secondly was picked to finish second in the Colonial, and two years ago, won the regular season in the Colonial and got actually that conference's only at-large bid ever to the NCAA tournament. So it's not some bad team that the Bulls are playing. If you look at their first results and think, oh, this is a team that's terrible. No, not the case. However, the story of the Bulls' lack of offense just continues, Jim. Yeah, and it's, it's just a, a case of not being able to put the ball in play. I mean, there's, there's some hard hit outs, but again, over 10 strikeouts yet again over 50 strikeouts in the starting lineup tonight. It's uh, something's got to give, man, for sure. And really, if you look at maybe a shakeup in the lineup, we're not going to see that per se. We do see Julio Cortez in as the DH, so uh, Jordan Santos takes a seat there, and then Nick Gonzalez in for Alex Bellows. So head coach Billy Mole going with the approach of, I don't think I, I, think I have the right guys. I don't want to do anything drastic, and that's going to be the case. So there's not going to be any national anthem. We'll go ahead and take one last break, and we'll have the first pitch for you in just a couple of minutes of Game 2 between the Bulls and the Huskies on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented, presented by Marathon. It's Dupair. Dupair. Dupair, D. Dupree. Dupree. Doesn't look like that. Okay, I'm going to write Dupree there. And then Fair, De Loretta, Peterson, Costello, Cervone, Cervone. Cervone, yeah. Okay, and it's Holt Got it. Got it. All right, thanks. Holt I went down there before the game. And pitching number 49, Jeff Stasiak. Jeff. And going to your bowls is Billy Mole. He's assisted by assistant coach Bo Durkett, assistant coach Alan Kumpel, and volunteer assistant coach Karsten Whitson. Director of operations is Greg Harris. The umpires for tonight's game are Rick Chamberlain, Rick Darby, and Rob Keeley. And Derek Sharp and Jay Retcher with you on this real beautiful, at this point anyway, Saturday late afternoon because let me tell you, it was uh, really, really cold this morning and it became a glorious day for baseball. Now we will see if the Bulls can sort of become the team that makes it even more pretty from an actual perspective of output. And right now, Jack Jasiak is going to be in charge of that because the Bulls are needing some sort of shutdown inning. But right now, Jay, to me, it's all about what's going to happen on the other side. Scott Holtzwasser, who led off the first game, is going to lead this one off as well. And he looks at 
a called strike two after a fouled off first pitch. So, so far, so good for Jazzy. Yeah, Holtzwasser did a good job in the first game reaching on a leadoff walk and ended up scoring and that ended up being the game winner right there. Came into the series one for nine and well, he's going to be after one for five in the second game, 0 for one in this game, and a quick three pitch strikeout. Impressive start for Jassiak. It looks like that trip to the consensus stand paid off already, Derek Sharp. <laughs> we got to tell you, uh, one thing that needed to happen was a uniform change. Yes. And uh, both teams did. Now, as you correctly pointed out, you pretty much have to keep the same pants, right? That's just too much. Work. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. That's but, a lot. but the tops for the Bulls are now green while Northeastern switched from the red shirts to the all gray uniforms. And right now, Jack Jassiak's color is white hot because he is four pitch and four strikes into this one. And it's Jared Dupree, the sophomore center fielder for the Huskies. And he looks at two perfectly spotted fastballs in the outside corner, does not lift the bat. He is down 0-2. Yeah, and it looks like both teams did the same thing because the Bulls were going straight up pinstripes top and bottom probably a good idea to change it up oh yeah trying to waste that first pitch in there and just a little bit outside with that one is Jassiak first out wayward pitch of the day and of course he pitched so well in his first outing for the Bulls going seven innings and took a no decision in an extra inning game for the Bulls and again that game against Maris kind of underscore what their issue has been this year oh perfectly thrown pitch on the inside corner for a called strike three Two up, two down, both via the K. Yeah, and you saw in the first game a lot, these hitters for Northeastern right on top of the plate. They're looking for that ball away. If the Bulls can work inside out, like we saw Colin Sullivan attempt to do in game one, they're going to have some success. We're already seeing Jesse Ack do that here in game two. Jesse Ack just absolutely coming with the heat right now. And now the guy that was the best hitter in the conference last year, the Colonial and Fair. Had a nice game earlier today, two for four with a couple of runs and an RBI, but he swings and misses at that fastball, and it is just zipping in there right now. Got to be very impressed with what you're seeing from Jasiak. He's ahead 0-1. Nothing like getting as quickly as you can through the top of the first inning to hand it back over yeah. to your uh, offense, and man, that is another fastball. Wailed and missed that by a great hitter, Fair. It's 0-2. Fair's got some wheels, too. We saw that in the first game. He scored on a double in the left field corner. Right now, his wheels are going to wow. take him right over to the dugout. And that is as impressive as a first inning of work as you're going to see. I see Logan Lyle and a couple other members of the Bulls with their green hoodies coming over to say, good job, young man. Now let's see if the offense can follow suit here. No scores we have at the bottom of the first. This is baseball the USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Derek Sharp here with Jay Retcher. feel like we actually have a chance to give you the starting lineup. So kind of forgot that there'd be no national anthem. I wasn't here for the beginning of the first game, so that's why we sort of joined in progress right when the first pitch was thrown. The Bulls starting lineup will be similar to what you saw in game one, actually, with Dante Mitchell leading off. He has done an outstanding job, got a walk in that first game. J.D. Duckham moves up from third to second. Then it's Jake Sullivan who will be again catching. He moves up two spots in the order, by the way. Riley Hogan stays in the cleanup role. Dylan Buck slots up to the fifth spot. Julio Cortez is your new DH and the number six hitter today. Nick Gonzalez in the seven hole for the shortstop Alex Bello, who had kind of taken over the last couple games as the starter there. And Daniel Cantu will get another start. The freshman, one of many freshmen they're trying in that left field role, who was 0 for 4, 0 for 3 early today, is 0 for 7 for the season, but will still get a chance, as will in right field. 
Dylan Vesnier, and they will be facing Sam Jacobsack for Northeastern. The tall right hander's first pitch is just on the inside corner out of the strike zone, 1 0. So already he has thrown as many balls as, <laughs> as Shasiak threw in that very first inning for the Bulls. 32 innings last year for Northeastern. This righty inside with that one, and Mitchell can't hold off. Looked like it might have been a ball, too, but he wanted to get a piece of it. It's 1 and 1. 5.34 ERA, 37 strikeouts on that season. Pitched once this year, five innings. Got the second start against Bama. Actually gave them five innings and three earned runs, five runs total. Struck out five and walked one, and he's ahead now with Mitchell one and two. Anybody, it does not matter who in the lineup right now, they are looking to get something from. And ooh, Mitchell saw that one outside just ooh. barely to make it two. That was two. close. Say that again. You don't have to. You've been talking a lot today. It's a double header. Thanks, Derek. You don't have to repeat anything. Thanks, Derek. Two and two to the leadoff man for the Bulls here in the bottom of the first. Ooh, outside corner. And from our point of view, that might have been a little too far outside, but it's called. And Jacob Sack gets a strike out to start things off here. Yeah, Rick Darby, the home plate umpire, with the untraditional strikeout, he just put his right arm up. So something that you're not going to be able to see always with the naked eye. So you're going to have to rely a little bit more on us on the broadcast here. J.D. Dunka will come up now earlier today. He was 0 for 3. Takes him to 4 for 23 on the season. Not going to have many pretty offensive numbers right now. There's no way to, to try and dress it up for you here. It's just not that way for the Bulls. And he looks at a pitch called strike on the outside corner from Jacob Sack. The Husky pitcher, 6'5 junior from Milton Mass, hurls that one in a curveball and just a little bit low and outside. All the ball, 1 and 1. And the softball team is going on behind us. We'll let you know how they're doing as well. They had some big drama earlier today. So take a look around the conference. Oh, that's a good curveball, but a little bit low. Two and one, so good eye here from Ducka. Jason Jacob Zach. Derek Sharp with Jay Retcher. And the Bulls and Huskies just in away in game two of a doubleheader. That's a strike on the outside corner, so the fastball has found the spot here. Has some fans here. Two and two. And that ball's hit pretty well. Center field Dupree goes back on it, and he is going to, without needing the sunglasses, really, still got him sported out there. Makes a cool looking catch, and it's out number two. So Jay uh, Ducco making some good contact there with his two away. It's one thing. Let's try and end the strikeouts. Oh, yeah. That has been an issue for the Bulls. It was again in the first game. Again, they. It beat 10-0, striking out a total of 13 times. As Kyle Murphy went the first five, just gave up one hit, struck out eight, then Brian Rodriguez went the last four and struck out five. Some in some key situations for the Bulls. Jake Sullivan is going to get his second go as a catcher today, so he is going to jump right into the ice bath when this thing is over. One of the few, he's the only guy that started that didn't strike out. Him and Dylan Buck, excuse me. There you go, 13 strikeouts. So he gets underneath that one. Turned on it pretty well, but well out of play. Hit the ball real hard. He had a nice shot up the middle, or excuse me, to the five, six hole where Spencer Smith made the play and made a nice throw. And then he lined a base hit up the middle. So Jake, one of the few guys in the lineup you can look at and go, well, he had some good swings there in game one. Hopefully he can carry it over here to game two. Yeah, that was in a key spot in that game when it was still one nothing early on. And, well, it's going to be nothing nothing early on here as a slider and a beauty ends the inning. So nothing doing for either team so far through the first inning. We head to the second. In the second game of a doubleheader, this is baseball. The USF Bulls Unlimited presented by Marathon. We have Nick with us today to try to guess which helmet it is. Let's see if you get it right.
And right now you can get five cents off every gallon of fuel every day with Make It Count Rewards from Marathon. To sign up, just visit makeitcount.com slash radio or download the free app. Offer valid only at participating Marathon locations. Marathon, fueling the American spirit. As we get towards the end of the afternoon, into the evening, it's starting to cool down just here a little bit. So, Jay Ratcher, I'm looking around the stands to see if any... Boy, this is Florida, isn't it? We're yeah, still it in the 60s, and no one's wearing short sleeves. <laughs> Absolutely no one. Come on, people. I see a couple of uh, members of the softball team over there. Allie Barnhart, she's from, I want to say Kansas, and she's got the long sleeves on. So that just shows you how she's adjusted to uh, being thin-skinned like the rest of us. That's right. So much for that. <laughs> I love the uh, when we get players from other teams coming to support their fellow student athletes here. Trying to get them some runs and Northeastern's trying to get anything going in the second game against Jack Jasiak who was dominant in the first inning. Threw 10 pitches and struck out three. See that tells you that he just threw one ball. He's already equaled that total here. Leading it off to Corey DiLoretto here in the second inning. Just outside with that one. He is zipping it in. That one he lost, and it's going to be a 2-0 start here for DiLoretto. Came into the series 2 for 10 with an RBI and a walk. Equaled that hit total. Scored a couple of runs in the first game here today. And he hits that one. It's going to be a third hit for him on the day. And a 2-0 pitch that he knew was going to be right over the heart. He smacks into left field for a base hit. First of the... I'm, i got to be careful how I say first of the game. You can't say first of the day. Yeah, no, I know. We've had a game already today, one that the Bulls just came, put up and well that we uh, don't don't remember, but it did take place. I just like to think about it like uh, they came in second in that first game. Yes, they did. Silver medal. <laughs> so now it's going to be the lefty facing the righty, Kyle Peterson. And, of course, he had the big hit of the first game. And really, when you look at 10 nothing, you think it was never a game. Not true. Bulls had several chances in the first several at-bats. And then... As it was one nothing going to the fifth, this kid right here hit the big three-run homer that busted open, and now he is one and one to Jasiak. Just making sure we got some of these pronunciations right. I requested and got the pronunciation guy. Okay, Jacob Sack. Well, that was the big one. <laughs> we're good. We have I been think saying we've been doing we good. have been we're saying their right. starting pitcher's name right, and nice. we're ready to apologize. We didn't. That one's rolled over to second base. Duck is going to have to go to first. Nice play. And just to get that play is good enough. Runner advances, but as Jay says, a nice play by the Bulls' second baseman. Duck arranging to his left, spins and fires. I thought he possibly could have gone to second base. Uh, uh, Nick there to get the force, but his momentum's taking him to first base. Just get the out. And that's exactly what he did. Smart play. Let's see if you guys have been messing with any other have, uh, names. No, we're good. Old Swasser, you nailed it. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. I think we're good. All right. I ran down before the first game <laughs> while the coach was making out the lineup. I was like, hey, hey excuse me. <laughs> How do you say this guy? He was like, what do you want, kid? This one is pretty easy. Jeff Costello now with a runner in scoring position. Looks at a pitch on the inside corner. Runner at second. One out here in the top of the second inning. No score yet between Northeastern and USF. So they were just able to get Peterson. We mentioned is a three-run homer. That made it a 6 nothing score there and kind of did things away for the Bulls. That one is skied in the infield. Dylan Buck over there at third base, going to drift into foul territory. Does not have any elements to deal with, but catching the ball, which he does for out number two. So big out there, recorded by Jack Jasiak, who continues to pound the strike zone, as they say. Now it's going to bring up the designated hitter. You might have heard Ryan Cervone, who in first game, did not perform. Yeah, he wasn't in it. That's why. That's not, why. I, I wasn't casting any aspersions <laughs> on his talent. Look at you throwing stones. <laughs> that is a fouled off pitch from the lefty to the righty. Derek, Mr. Cervone would like to see you outside of the press box. <laughs> he just did not perform, that guy. <laughs> he is uh, 0 for 4 for the season. So we're looking for his first hit here, and the Bulls would rather the freshman from Lexington, Massachusetts, does not come through with said hit. Runner at second base. As there is are, are now two outs here in the top of the second inning. Aztec takes a look over at second. And now comes Plateward, and that one is fouled out of play. And a couple of kids over there between the dugout and the bullpen look like they're wearing northwestern uh, northeastern gear, but they actually look like kids. Yeah, I don't know right. if that's like the JV team. <laughs> 
But uh, never any, know. anything fouled over there is snagged by one of those young lads. 0-2, that one was fouled off. And good smart pitch to the outside corner there to the lefty and holding off on it. Really well, like, there is the DH. So re really like what I'm seeing from Jesiak right now. Attacking the zone, being aggressive. Even on his misses, he's right around the zone. He's getting some check swings. Day two pitcher, game two pitcher in this case, was great in his first go around against Marist and just missed the corner that time. He was trying to spot it on the outside corner to the freshman Cervone. About the uh, player bios on the Northeastern website. Interested, his hobbies include fishing and strength training. Okay. He's one of the strong fishermen. And that time he goes fishing, thank you very much, <laughs> <laughs> and missing for a call, I mean, a swing and a miss, strike can't, three. You can't script it anyway. Thank you, that was all planned out. Now I'm gonna plan for the Bulls to score some runs in the next inning. Let's see if they can do that for the first time today. We head to the bottom of the second. No score, this is baseball and USF Bulls Unlimited presented by Marathon. Support for your daily routine. You can count on Adidas to perform to the highest level. Adidas, here to create. Welcome back to Creating an inspiring outdoor experience for over 20 years, ASI Landscape Management is a proud partner and supporter of USF Athletics. ASI combines unique and sustainable landscape design with an emphasis on exceptional service throughout Central Florida. ASI Landscape Management, enhancing landscape and life. Bulls win, you win at Papa John's the day after a USF win. Get 50% off pizzas online or on the app when you use promo code USF wins. You can track your order to the door with the new Papa John's tracker like Jay does because he's very, uh, he's on edge all the time. That's right. Papa John's, proud supporter of USF. Give me my pizza, give me my pizza. Hey, come on, guys, they always make it on time. Yeah, they do. Riley Hogan from the left side, switch hitter, and he has gotten off to a nice little week here for the Bulls. He fouls that one off. First pitch offering, and it's 0-1. Hogan added another hit earlier today, so he is on a three-game hitting streak, and that's good because he was on a zero-game hitting streak for his first three, but a guy that notoriously, once he gets it going, can really, really heat up, and the Bulls need someone to do that, obviously, here in this early part of the season, which sees him 2-4 and four right now, and that's a curveball and a dandy. Bulls really battled the curves earlier today based on listening to the excellent broadcast with you and Jim. Thank you. Sounded like they, they battled the curves. Uh, they sure did. And you know what? <laughs> Riley's first hit uh, of the in that first game was a nice line drive to left field on a 3-1 count. He didn't try to do too much. Well, let's see what he does here. And he Similar to that swing right there. Stays alive on an 0-2 count with fastball high and sends it off into the left field side of things. Riley Hogan, junior college transfer for the Bulls from South Carolina. No relation to Mike Hogan, right? No. Or, Hul or Hulk? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. They are kindred spirits. That's how they are related. Ah, oh, God, I knew it. He mentions Mike Hogan, who is our buddy, the sports information director. Ooh, that's a curveball that stays outside, but had some fun movement to it. Uh, for women's basketball and men's soccer, which two of our favorite sports. Mm -hmm. And right now, uh, we'll let you know how they're doing in just a little bit. The women's team is taking on Memphis. Uh, spoiler alert, they're doing pretty well right now. One and two. Oh, Hogan gets under that one. Then that's just a little bit too much underneath. The right fielder is going to close in. Costello squeezes the glove for out number one in the inning. Thought he got a little bit more of that than he actually did, but Hogan continues to make contact. There's one away here. The women's basketball team, after, after two very, very difficult games, losing to UConn when they were ahead at the half, and then... Over in Orlando the other night for the UCF game, having it and then losing it. And now beating Memphis, which is not an easy place to play, no. not a bad team. And they just ripped them in the first quarter, 
23 to 10 first quarter. It's tremendous. And right now they are ahead 34 to 19. So that is outstanding. Really needed to get the uh, shooting going, and they, they did. <laughs> so that's an impressive, impressive start for those guys. In Memphis, that ball is fouled off by Dylan Buck, who is down 0-2 in this count. First game for Dylan. One for four brings him to five for 24 for the season. Sophomore from Lakewood Ranch. Seth right now already has 12 points. That's the difference from Sydney Harvey, who only scored two against UCF, really struggled. So it's good to see her going back. Buck sh shoots one to right field. It's going to go foul, but the way the wind is going, that would be the place to go today, right field. Oh, yeah. It's still going to be 0-2. It uh, helped claim a victory for the softball team earlier today in dramatic fashion. Kinda Williams' first career homer, and she put it to the opposite way, and it just flew out of there because even the right field on the softball field is even better of a win. Buck over to short. Could be a difficult play for Smith. He makes it, though, and a nice scoop over there at first. And just like that, there's two away. Another great play by Spencer Smith. He made a really nice play. The first game against Jake Sullivan and another one on the backhand there. And just made sure that the throw was on launch. He knew he wasn't going to be able to get it there in the air. Just keep it in the right lane right there and give De Loretto a chance at first base. That's exactly what he did. Two away now for Cortez. Yeah, that play he made was to start off the second inning when, again, the Bulls, you know, he was a leadoff batter. Could have gotten things going. And it had to be a great play on both sides. And that's just kind of how it's been for the Bulls. But... At the same time, you still got to come up with the hits when you can. Julio Cortez, first action of the day, looks at that ball for strike one. So, as we mentioned, the first game 10 0, but it was 1 0 until the fifth. And that ball's outside 1 and 1. Cortez Four. did get in the game. Sorry, Derek. Sure. Cortez did get in the game as a pinch hitter for Alex Bello with the bases loaded. And he promptly lined into a double play. Bases loaded, one out. He lines one back up the middle. Rodriguez snares it, throws it to first with a double play. And that was really the closest that USF got to score in game one. That was in the sixth inning. Hits that one pretty well, but the left fielder got a good jump on it. And Peterson will make the catch. So nothing doing for either team. Look for the one hit in the top of the second for Northeastern. We head to the third with still no score. This is baseball on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Derek Sharp, Jay Retcher here in a progressively chillier Saturday. And unfortunately, if you're looking for themes, the Bulls' bats have definitely not heated up. They scored those two runs in the third inning. That would have been on Tuesday night against FSU on an error throw from the third baseman. And since then, I uh, have not scored. Now we are talking about... What's 9 plus 6 plus 2, Jay? 17. 17. Yes, yeah, sir. That's a lot of innings. Yeah, it is. That's where we are right now, <laughs> unfortunately, for the Bulls going up against Northeastern. Fortunately, Jack Jasiak has been tremendous. Starts off this inning with a strike and just barely getting a piece of that is the catcher Ed Jarvis. Jarvis. He did not play in the first game. It was Teddy, not a great guy, I don't know how to pronounce, Bedeau. Bidot, one of those French guys. Yeah, sure was. Yeah, That's right. Big French contingent for Northeastern. This Udo. squared off to second base and a nice play there to retire Jarvis by Dunka, who has fielded a couple balls perfectly here tonight. And there's one away here in the top of the third. Back Go to the number nine batter, Spencer Smith, who was one for three in the first game, as you mentioned. Really well known for his defense and made some key plays that have kept the Bulls from getting it going, unfortunately. 
case when you're struggling every little thing that you're hoping to get just doesn't come your way and that's where we are right now with the Bulls but still a nothing nothing game Spencer Smith by the way last year hit 235 no homers so really truly more of a defensive player and he's heading to count one and out looks at that fastball right down the heart one and one big play of the last game as well with Spencer Smith coming up in that big inning with the home run and with nobody out, he laid down a nice bunt to move the runner to second base, and three singles, and then the home run came soonly thereafter. So those little things set sure. that whole inning up there. Sometimes that's all it takes, that selflessness, that sacrifice to be able to get that bunt down and to move the runner. Uh, that's it's something that you can't really quantify in numbers. You don't look at that at the box score and it jumps out at you. But mm -hmm. I thought I was so impressed by that and the way his teammates reacted, you could tell. It meant something special. Well, it sounds like it's his role. Oh, and for he, sure. He formed it well in that situation. And his role in this case is to go back to the dugout as he is the fifth strikeout victim. That ball dipped low in the zone for a yeah. called strike three, and that's five through one time in the order by Jassiak. And he had, going through the order one time has only needed 30 pitches to do it. Very effective. Very economical so far. So the Pitching very good here. Nice off-speed pitch that Scott Holtzwasser just looked at and hoped would be a little bit high in the zone off his hand. It looked that way, but gets, gets the part of the plate. 0-1. No Holtzwasser. Ooh, another off-speed pitch, and that's a sweeping curve that he waves and misses at. And Jasiak, I, I just can't tell you how impressive he's been. I mean, I can. It's been really impressive instead. <laughs> <laughs> so close to what he does here setting up outside of Sullivan and outside fastball that Jesse, I'm sorry, Holtzwasser is able to waste away, stays 0-2. He's doing a good job of staying in the zone but not down the middle. Some of those pitches are starting outside the zone and creeping back in. Some of them starting in the zone and leaving. So these 0-2 pitches, these two strike pitches have been really good. And that's another dandy, Jack Jassiak tailing away with that one and he has been masterful in this game no runs no hits he's only given up one hit and he has now struck out six in three innings of work we head to the bottom half no score yet this is baseball in usf bulls unlimited presented by marathon yikes Well, the game, uh, the first game anyway, was moving zippingly along the first hour. Uh, I think four innings comprised it, and then it slowed down with the scoring for Northeastern. This one has been supremely fast. In fact, it's taken less than a half hour to play two and a half innings. So let's see if we can slow that pace down here with some offense for the Bulls. Nick Gonzalez getting into the game here. He came out as a defense replacement, obviously, after Alex Bello was pinch hit for by Julio Cortez. And he looks at a nice off-speed pitch there from... Sam Jacobson, and it's 0-1. Starting off the bottom of the third inning. You can tell the wind is, it's been no fun this weekend. Oh, Gonzalez hits a rocket, and it is snared by the third baseman. Fair, and that is unfair if you're Gonzalez one away. I mean, he just hammered that ball. And Fair, I'm not exactly sure knew what was going on, but he stuck his glove out. That's what happened. Sometimes self-defense is the best defense, Derek. I like that. <laughs> I like, did you just make that up? No, no, no. I've had that. I've had that in the bag for years. <laughs> in the years. Well, that was exactly what was going on there. And that ball was ticketed for left field and extra bases. But 
No doing. And next pitch could be a quick second out. Snubbed by Cantu over to second base. And it's going to be squibbed, not snubbed. You snubbed a base hit. And there are two away quickly. So just like that, the Bulls absolutely crush the ball. And now we look up and there are two quickly away as Jacobsack. Jacob Sack, sorry, has thrown 28 pitches, so he is actually matching Jassiak. Jacob Sack and Jassiak. Jacob Sack and Jassiak. Yeah, Sounds like a law firm. Don't try and repeat that for uh, efficiency here. Dylan Besner is trying to get the efficiency ramped up a little bit. And, boy, this could be a really fast inning. It will be over to Fair, who fields it on a bounce. And the Bulls came up swinging and coming up short. Hit the ball really hard once and really soft the next two times. And that is going to do it for the first three innings. Bulls without a hit thus far. Jay Retro will take you through the middle innings. And hope to bring the Bulls some better fortune. As we head to the fourth, still no score here today in game two of a doubleheader. This is baseball and USF Bulls Unlimited presented by Marathon. Welcome back to the USF Baseball Stadium alongside the great Derek Sharp, Jay Retcher here with you. It's gotten a little bit of a, oof, a little chilly here, Derek. The wind just came howling in like the, uh, reminds me of the song, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. <laughs> You're always, Hopefully people so don't follow suit. Such a well-placed quote machine, Derek Sharp is. I'll get my wife on that song, she'll not stop singing. Jared Dupree stepping in, takes the first pitch strike over the heart of the plate. And Jack Jassiak, man, holy smokes. He's been all over it today. Only one hit given up through three. Here's the 0-1. That ball's down, one and one. Dupree struck out looking in the first. He had ace hits in his first three at-bats of game one. That's a cut on a miss strike two. He's got a his swing looks almost identical to former Mets great Daniel Murphy. That slight hunch with the bat. Did you Even say with the Mets great Daniel Murphy? Former, former Mets great. Mets great Daniel yeah. Murphy, you Mets guy, you? No, I'm not a Mets guy. Oh, that's right. That one, that, one, guy, that one postseason that they went to the World Series and they lost to the World Series, he hit home runs off of like, Kershaw, Granke, like the top five hitters in the NL postseason that year. He, he went ding-dong off of each <laughs> look one. His career stats look at that, his great batting average. Look at that one postseason for the Mets. It was incredible. <laughs> Here's the one-two from Jesse Eck. Just off the outside corner, two and two. Daniel Ding Dong Murphy, they call him. Also a guy without a position, though, but he raked that one year. Got a 298 batting average. You could do worse throughout your career. 719 ribs. That's Here's a lot. Here's the 2 2. In there for a call, strike three, right over the inner half. Jassiak gets Dupree looking for out number one here in the fourth. Nice pitch. Top of the order, by the way, so far, 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. So the best part of the lineup has just been absolutely nothing doing against them. Next up, Ian Fair, the third baseman for Northeastern. Front side, front door breaking ball in there for a cold strike. And everything, the whole repertoire is working right now for Jassiak. He looks good. Here's the 0-1 to the Huskies' third baseman. Fastball cut on, a very weak swing. Strike two. He's got them all discombobulated right now, Derek. 
it's tremendous to see. It's almost like uh, Northeastern has reverted to looking how they looked in their first few games when they got shut out a couple times. Got shut out by the Red Sox yesterday. What's their problem? <laughs> three nothing and seven. Cut on and miss. Strike three on that breaking ball down and away. Jasiak is all over it right now. That's a second strikeout. That's three in a row. Eight on the day. Two three and two thirds. Very impressive. So and that'll bring. Top of the order, all two strikeouts apiece. That's, <laughs> That's amazing. Right. That'll bring up the guy who has got the lone single for either team, Corey DiLoretto, the first baseman. First pitch. It's almost a check swing, foul ball, straight back. So ahead again, 0-1, 2015, Daniel Murphy. He was the NLCS MVP against Chicago. He batted 529. <laughs> I actually do vaguely remember that. He had eight, 17 at-bats. He had four home runs. His slugging percentage was 1294. That is um, epic proportions. That's Babe Ruthian. Yeah, he just had a couple good games. He just had a couple good games. In a, good, in a big spot. In that postseason, he had seven home runs. <laughs> You are justified in your calling him a Mets great. The Murph dog. Just one year. <laughs> Breaking ball's down. Jasiak, man, you can you like his composure on the mound. He doesn't mess around. No wasted movement. And I like the big thing with pitchers is staying on line. Even though he has a closed stance, that front leg always going straight to the plate. Breaking ball's down two and one. Date on that women's basketball game. They're up big at the half right now. That's great. 39 to 22. Very nice. That's tremendous at Memphis. Softball losing to FIU 4 2 after a big walk off against Tennessee earlier. Here's the 2 1. That break ball's in there for a called strike. 2 and 2. Jassy have one pitch away from four scoreless here to start off game two of this doubleheader. Bulls again fall 10 0 in game one. We'll blame that squarely on the shoulders of. The great Jim Lauk. He'll take it. Here's the 2-2. Fastball just inside Jasiak and Jake Sullivan wanted that one. It looked to be a hair inside. You got to remember that wind that we're hearing, that you're hearing from time to time, is in the favor of the pitcher. Sure is. And it gives you a little bit of extra you know, boost. He's taking advantage. Full count. And there's a line drive base hit to left field. So a breaking ball catches too much of the plate. De Loretta was able to stay back, use his arms, line that thing into left field for a two-out single. The only man with a hit today, and now he has two, and give him credit because that's the first, I believe, three-ball count that Jasiak has gone into today, and he knew that it was going to be a good pitch because he kind of acknowledges what's going on on the other side and he took it right where you need to take it. The power source from game one, Kyle Peterson now up for Northeastern, grounded out to second in the second. First pitcher Peterson is down 1 0. And the key to Jasiak here early on in this game, Derek, is getting ahead with strike one. And it's so important to do that, especially with runners on base. Let's see if uh, we get some movement there at first base. He stays. That next pitch is fouled away 1 and 1. We've seen Northeastern struggle to score in those first two games against Alabama. It is Alabama, so you have to take that, you know in context but they really came out swinging in game one and they weren't afraid to get the runners moving lay some bunts down don't be surprised they do that here again with two outs the runner doesn't go and there's a ground ball second duck fields the ball throws it over to first for out number three so four innings of northeastern offense no runs let's see if the bulls can do something in the bottom half we go to the bottom of the fourth inning you're listening to baseball on usf bulls and limited presented by center on february 25th against ecu at 7 p.m for their play for k game for more information, please visit GoUSFBowls.com or visit the marketing table at the entrance.
Welcome back, bottom of the fourth here at the USF Baseball Stadium. Jay Retcher and Derek Sharp here with you. The Bulls looking to push across their first run of the day. 10-0 loss in game one. They're looking to do something here in game two. Dante Mitchell will lead things off. The leadoff hitter for the Bulls. Freshman center fielder struck out looking to lead off the game. Five total plate appearances today. Two walks. Three strikeouts. He squares around the bunt. He takes the ball low, 1 0. Mitchell's done a good job getting on base, I believe. It's seven walks on the year now. But again, too many strikeouts. He's also another culprit. This team needs to put the ball in play. That ball's down and 0, two, down low, 2 and 0. Oh. Especially a guy like Mitchell Speed, Derek. You can't, you gotta put the ball in play. Even ground balls. You're putting the, well, the, the fear in other teams. Bun up the first base yeah, right now. They're so far back. If you could work that into his game, into his repertoire, and I know he's more Still of a swing, yeah, it's more of a swing, swing away guy in high school at Lakewood. But, yeah, right now would be a good time to do it. As you say, they need anything to get it going. You just have the feeling that once they get something, mm -hmm. it'll come down, come downhill in a good way, but it's just not happening right now. Here's the 2-1 to the Bulls leadoff hitter. And that ball's fouled away, 2-2. Two and two. You know, we look at what USF is doing wrong, and obviously we're the Bulls broadcast here, but you also got to give credit to Northeastern. The Huskies have done a good job pretty much in all facets of every game. Uh, you know, I don't know it's only been a game and a half here or so, but the pitching's been good, the hitting's been good, especially in a the situation there. They're down 2-0. Pitchers come right back and even up the count. Here's the 2-2. Ball's popped up. Looks like it will get out of play fair, giving it a look, but it is foul. Pun 100% intended there. Oh, come on. You think he's heard them all by now, huh? Yeah. The guy whose last name is Fair, incidentally, was uh, better than Fair last year. Uh, 367, led the CAA, picked as a first teamer all year. Uh, first teamer th for this season, obviously. Here's the 2 2. That ball's in there, strike three. So Mitchell goes down, couldn't check his swing. And that'll bring up the number two hitter in the Bulls lineup. JD Duncan. Interesting, uh, if you look at the Colonial again, last two years ago, they became the conference's first at large. In fact, I did some reading their notes. Only twice in NCAA baseball history has there been a team from that Northeast region picked as an at large. That's amazing. It's amazing because all the powers concentrated SEC, ACC, Pac 12, Big 12, Big yeah. 10. You have to know that it was coming too. All of your Metro Atlantics and your Colonials and your NECs, just they don't get at large. It's crazy. First pitch in there for a strike to Ducka. Ducka flew out to center, hit the ball pretty well in the first inning. Unfortunately, he was run down by Dupree. Here's the 0-1. He couldn't check his swing there, and quickly ahead 0-2 is Jacob Sack. <laughs> Have your eyes checked, Blue? Uh, yeah. She's got to come up with something more creative. And in there for a called strike three. J.D. Duckin not happy. Some part behind the plate, Rick Darby. I don't have his flight itinerary, but... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's the same people for every game yeah, in the series. They'll they play be here tomorrow. tomorrow. You know, I'm looking at their schedule from a couple years ago, and I figured they would have been like 40 and 10 or something to get that at large. They were 36 and 21. They had a series midway through the season where they're. I'll tell you after this pitch. Jake Sullivan now up. First pitch breaking ball in there for a call strike. They played 10th uh, ranked Texas Tech in a series of four games. Lost them all. The first three were 22 to 3, 12 to 3, 13 and 2, and 4 and 9. Must have loaded up at the back end of their schedule yeah. to get an at large bid. After that, or they barely squeaked into the tournament. That pitch is high and in. One and one, Jake, first time up, strung out swinging. We lost the two tournament games, 13-4 to Auburn and then NC State, which was the host. And there's a ball off the end of the bat. It will, oh, what a great play by Spencer Smith. We said that multiple times today, and the second time he's robbed Jake Sullivan of a base hit. One in game one, one in game two. We're scoreless as we head to the top of the fifth. You're listening to baseball right here on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Maryland. Oh, I thought that was going to fall. 
I thought that was going to fall. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Welcome back to the USF Baseball Stadium as it starts to turn from afternoon to night. The lights are now on here. This is probably one of the best times to live in, in the state of Florida, especially here in Tampa Bay. You see some really cool colors in the sky. The one color I want to see up on the scoreboard is I want to see a crooked number for the USF Bulls. We haven't seen a run through 13 innings yet. Hopefully things will change here in the fifth. But first, the Northeastern Huskies up to bat once again jeff costello the right fielder will lead off he popped out the dylan buck at third in the second inning costello with the play of the day is going to smith has been at short costello made a fantastic play in right field caught the ball and then flipped over the wall for a sports center top 10 play and he takes the first pitch in there for a call strike jack jasiak has been really good through four for the bulls eight strikeouts through four. Second pitch, fastball in the inside corner, strike two. So quickly ahead, 0-2 is Jassiak. And just like they did in the first game, the Bulls, three players on the left side of the infield for Costello. Just a C&I ground ball, the second base will do the job. And there it is, called strike three. Rick Darby's got a pretty big zone. <laughs> you got it's that right. It's been consistent for both teams, though. I understand Correct. there was some chirping from the USF fans from the last half inning, but it's been similar for both sides, so that's all you can ask for. Just some consistency. Especially if you're the pitcher. Oh, for sure. That's all you can ask for. That's strikeout number nine for Jassiak, and that'll bring up Ryan Cervone, the designated hitter. First pitch swinging, fly ball to left. Can't do a couple steps back before he Tricky changes wind. directions, comes in, <laughs> and makes the grab. Yeah, it looks like it got caught up in the wind there. And a good job, as all outfielders should, first step should be back. And then you make the necessary adjustment as you show there. He comes in, makes the grab, and two quick outs for Jasiak and the USF defense. Uh, that catch, by the way, by Smith to end the last inning, I mean, you could tell, like you said, with his simple at bat earlier, that his players and his teammates really love the guy. It was quite a reaction to quite a play. First pitch in there for a cold strike. Ed Jarvis, the catcher. He grounded out the second first time up. First couple at bats for him today because in the first game, that ball's fouled away. Quickly ahead, 0 2. Jasiak again. Quick. And Teddy Baudet was catching the first game. He did a really good job in that game as well. He got hit by a pitch late in the game, so I wonder if that was the reason why he came out or just giving him the right. That's in there for a cold strike three. So. Another great job there by Jack Jasiak. That's strikeout number 10 on the evening. 10 strikeouts through five. Seven we are pitches in that game. How about that? So we're through four and a half. Can the Bulls crack the code of the Northeastern pitching staff? We hope they can. We hope you come back too. It's Jay and Derek here. Listen to baseball on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Q of the day. It's Jay and Derek.
Welcome back to the USF Baseball Stadium. Star right now is the pitcher for both teams, whether it's Jack Cassiano for the USF Bulls or Sam Jacobsack for the Northeastern Huskies. I'm going to guess it's the first Jacobsack versus Jacobsack in college baseball history. I think in any sport. <laughs> in any sport. Riley Hogan will lead off for the Bulls here in the bottom of the fifth. He flew out to right. Just got underneath it his first time up to lead off the second inning. Now here he is leading off the fifth. First pitch in there for a ball strike. And listen, you can complain what all you want about the strike zone, but it's the same for both teams, and you got to make the adjustment just the way it goes. It's a game of failure baseball. Who can make the adjustment? That ball's down in the way, one and one. Sometimes that's all it is, man. It's just who can do it for one inning? Who can expand the zone or lay down a couple of bunts or make a couple plays and that's all you need score two or three runs you win the game three nothing boom get the dub here's the one one there's a ground ball to second base well Swasser picks it up throws it over to first four out number one here in the fifth inning so 13 straight retired by Jacob he's got a no hitter what this guy's got a no hitter one more time for the studio audience I mean, this game is zipping along. It started at 525. We are, what's 53 minutes from that, and we're in the bottom of the fifth inning. You know why? Because this guy's got a new hit. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jastiak's pitching great. Bulls can't get a hit on yeah, this guy. Yeah, because Jacob Sack has a no hitter. Uh, Dylan Buck grounded out to short his first time up. He steps in for the Bulls, and something tells me he's going to get a base hit. And he hits that ball to left. Back, back, back. And that's exactly what he does. And that is a double for Dylan Buck. The money in the bank, shorty what you drank. Derek gets half the credit, I get half the credit. Not only did Derek say no hitter four, three times, I said it a fourth and said he'd get a hit on that pitch. And that's gonna wrap up the broadcast for us today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I feel terrible. It's almost like I jinxed that kid. Oh, darn it. Darn. I'm so sorry to the J Jacob Sack family for listening to us. That was not my intention. I, it must have come out the wrong way. I was complimenting how well he was pitching and pointing out just a simple stat and then it seems like a different thing happened there. And actually it was just a great ball by Buck and into that stiff wind. I'm surprised that it got over the head of the left fielder Peterson, but the Bulls will take it, take anything right now. You got that right. A one out double for Dylan Buck. That'll bring up Julio Cortez, the designated hitter, fly ball to left in the second. And Julio, such a good job last year in his debut campaign for the Bulls. And with hitting being a real issue for this team, offense up and down the lineup, Julio and whoever the designated hitter is, these are the big situations that you need him to come up big. Runners in scoring position, less than two outs, single will score him. First pitch swinging at that breaking ball, strike one. Pitch selection has been the bugaboo for the Bulls today. Swinging at breaking balls outside of the zone, especially early in the count, has not been I've been good, for lack of a better, uh, a more extensive word. It just hasn't been good. You're swinging at the breaking balls early in the count. It's one thing if you're trying to protect with two strikes, but and there's a ground ball to second. Holtzwasser knocks it down, picks it up, and throws out Cortez at first. That's a good, a smart play by Holtzwasser. He knew he had time. He's a senior. Cortez is not the most fleet of foot. He knew if he just used his chest to keep the ball in front of him. He'd be able to knock it down, pick it up, and throw him out. That's exactly what he did. Buck moves across the third base, and but two away, that'll bring up Nick Gonzalez. Well, Gonzalez did not get fooled by Jacob Sack the first time up. If he hits it in the same spot, it'll be a one nothing Bulls lead because they're having to hold Buck over there at third base. And that's where he crushed it last time, but of course, third baseman Fair was pinched in a little. I know there's two, uh, two outs here, but a bunt down the third baseline. And there's a breaking killing. ball in there for a called strike. Because of that play, when you line out to third base like that, I often think that regardless of the situation, if you lay down a bunt there, there's just no way that that guy think, is going to think that's coming. You score the run, they throw the ball away, you never know what happens, especially with the speed of a guy like Nicky. That ball's cut on a missed strike too. That is a key pitch right there. That ball was well out of the zone. And Gonzalez wants so badly, and this is what you talk about when you talk about pressing, mm -hmm. to make a play, and that was not the one to be made. Was breaking ball down. It's just been a bugaboo for the Bulls lineup all day today. Here's the 0-2. I'd be very surprised if we didn't see another one. 
And we do. That ball's down. Yeah. Nice job by Jarvis to keep it in front of him. The reason why I say Jarvis like that, before my sister's son was born two years ago, we were needling her to name her son Jarvis. <laughs> she looked at us like we had nine hits. She named him Lawson. And now we're here. Jarvis with four A's apparently. Jarvis, yes, and two R's. Here's the one-two to Gonzalez. Brown ball is short. Spin up to make the play, throw it on the run, and that'll be out number three. So USF comes close to cleaning a run, but it doesn't happen. We go to the six. This game remains scoreless. Northeastern and USF will have the rest of the game for you right here on USF Bulls Unlimited when we return. Present the USF Bulls Unlimited. Present. For today's Coca-Cola Cornhole Challenge. Today we have Not even an hour. Like two, there's been like two or three plays like that. Where it was a play coming in, they have to make the throw to get him, and he got it every time. As the day turns tonight here at the USF Baseball Stadium, there are still no runs on the scoreboard for either team. Top of the six coming up. Jack Jasiak back to the mound for the Bulls. He has been dominant so far. 10 Ks, only two hits given up. And he hasn't shown any signs of, you know, shrugging his shoulders or slumping his shoulders, I should no. say, because they're not getting run support. Folks, in five innings, staggering them, 57 pitches. And that's good. How about 46 for strikes? Oh, and that ball's driven. The center field, Mitchell, back. It looks like he's got a beat on it. And he makes a grab for the first out. Spencer Smith, a nice little ride into that one. But one pitch, one out for Jassiak. Spencer Smith, maybe the unheralded uh, star of this day. So he's a good player. He's a good little player. He's a defensive plays. He's not going to, like you say, blow you away with his numbers. But uh, that was another big play right there. Not simple, but he made it. Spencer Smith only a sophomore, so a couple more years here. And this guy's a senior now, played at the top of the order, and that's in there for a cold strike. Scott Holtzwasser. Holtzwasser. Two Ks on the day after a pretty good performance in game one. Behind 0-1. That's a ground ball to short. Gonzalez looks it, fields it, throws it across the diamond, and he gets him for out number two. Oh! And Holtzwasser looks like he got tripped up on the bag over there, but he pops right up. He jogs off, so it looks like he's okay. So, two quick outs here in the sixth for Jack Jasiak. Looking around the league, by the way, some impressive yeah, results and some eight. tough Garrett scheduling Dupree. last night, especially Tulane, which was 4-0. Oh, they're going to go to Fullerton. They'll lose 1-0. Uh, wow. UCF, small schedule at the beginning. They'll lose at number eight, eight Auburn. They won. Oh, and that ball by Dupree is driven to right field. Besnier can't grab it. It goes all the way to the wall. Dupree hustles around first. And he'll be in there for a stand-up double with two away. Jared Dupree, two strikeouts in his first two at-bats. He gives he Jassy get around. No, no, no. He wasn't going to get the two strikes on Jassiak there. And he fires a double into the right field corner for a two-out double. I mentioned UCF beat Auburn on the road and again today. It's been a pretty good uh, weekend for the conference. The Bulls have got to pick it up. Cincinnati's <laughs> got to be 0-5 because they were scheduled. They lost to FSU today. Houston's playing a good event. They beat a top 15 team last night, Stanford. Yeah. So it's a tough conference, folks. Bulls sure got to get, get in shape here. Ian Fair steps to the plate. First pitch cut on a miss. Strike one. He's 0 for 2 on the day. A couple of strikeouts swinging in the first and fourth. Just the third hit for the Northeastern lineup in this game. I see just three, but the Bulls only have one. That double from Dylan Buck there in the fifth. Here's the 0-1 to the Huskies' third baseman. Cut on him is strike two. So regardless of what has gone on behind him, Jassiak, or even with his own team's offensive output, Jassiak not backing down one bit. 
being so effective with these pitches, throwing strikes. You gotta love it. You gotta love 61 total pitches and 50 <laughs> strikes. That's winning. That's winning baseball. A ball just off the outside corner, even on a pitch like that, like you're trying to get him to chase. So it wasn't like he really missed his spot. It's exactly where you want. Him. So one two to fair. And credit to Northeastern for adjusting, knowing he's gonna be around the zone and mm -hmm. taking their hacks when it's been there. For sure. One, two. Fastball just off the inner half. Oh, man. Good take by Fair there. That had the feel of a ring of luck. Let's hope it doesn't bite the balls here. This so two is a wild hitter. here. Great yeah. hitter. Yeah, that's right. And you got Jared Dupree leading off the second base. Infield, outfield straight away. Here's the 2-2. Two, two. Ground ball to third. Buck back on the hop and it bounces over his glove. And Dupree will score. So that 2-2... Two, two, Excuse me, that one-two fastball that went against the Bulls comes back to bite him, and the Northeastern Huskies take a one-nothing lead. Unfortunately, exactly what I feared, and I think Buck was rushing that a little bit for no reason. And I don't even think you want to ring that up to a bad hop. That's an error all the way and under run. Under run and Northeastern's at it. Buck waiting for that high hop, that drop step with that left foot. If you take your eye off it just a little bit, that ball's going to hop up on you. That's exactly what happened. And the Bulls now trail 1-0. First pitch high and tight to Corey DiLoretto, the first baseman for Northeastern. A couple of singles for Corey today in this game two of this two-game set. Full three-game series. Game three tomorrow. Jim Lock back on the call. And that ball stroke to center field. Mitchell back, giving it a run to right center. Back seems like he's got a beat on now, and he makes the grab for out number three. So that ball's hit pretty darn well by DiLoretto. Mitchell's solid defense keeps it a 1-0 game. Well, Bottom of the six, Bulls looking to tie this thing up. Possibly take the lead. Will they do it? No, stick around and find out. You're listening to baseball right here on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Back at the USF Baseball Stadium alongside Derek Sharp, I'm Jay Retcher. Northeastern picks up one in the top half of the sixth. The Bulls look to answer here in the bottom half. They've got 8-9-1 coming up. Daniel Cantu, the left fielder, will lead things off, followed by right fielder Dylan Besnier. Besnier? I always like to Frenchanize his name. <laughs> Dylan Besnier and Dante Mitchell. Made a nice grab for out number three in the top half. He'll be the third batter here in the bottom of the sixth. Back to the mound, Sam Jacobsack. He's been real good today for Northeastern. First pitch to Cantu in there for a ball strike through five innings. Jacobsack, one hit given up, four Ks, no walks. The only runner to reach is the double by Dylan Buck. 28 pitches, 39 strikes. That ball's fouled straight back by Cantu, and Jacobsack quickly up 0-2. So it looks like there's a little little rustling in the USF bullpen and people starting to do calisthenics over yeah, on the northeastern side. One kid, I don't know what he's doing. That's called the scorpion. Looks like my dog in the grass. That is the scorpion, but arms only. Here's the 0-2. That ball line drive. Nice play, and it gets over. It gets by Smith. And the leadoff hitter is on for the Bulls. That's the second hit of the day. Nice hard shot there by Daniel Cantu. The freshman reaches. Critical because anything like you say, and it was just like last thing, just make contact. 
Smith would make that play, but that was a tough play to make, and it got past him. And we've got a pinch hitter. Carmine Lane will now step into the batter's box for the aforementioned Dylan Besnier. And Carmine Lane, remember him from early in the season, the hero. He's a pinch hitting machine. He actually pitched in game one of this. Yeah, he pitched the other double night. Doubleheader, too. well so. against the Knolls, actually impressed me. A little bit of a uh, jack of all trades for this USF team. Throw over to first base to keep an eye on Cantu, and he's back in time. And Carmine Lane, this is opportunities. I mean, guys are going to, you know, with the offense is struggling, you have to think that Coach Mole is going to be looking deep into his bench and trying to find that right combination of players to get this offense rolling in the right direction. Still early. And he takes off. And Lane swinging at the first pitch, and it's going to be right at the left fielder, Peterson, all the way back. And they get him the double play. And Cantu, I don't want to say he was lollygagging, Derek, but I don't think he was going full speed there. I didn't think he thought the throw was going to come all the way through. Peterson with a hose doubles him off of first base. And it's just been that kind of day for the Bulls, Derek. Unreal. Unreal. And you're right. Uh, Cantu didn't think it was possible. And as you saw, that throw was going to be an accurate throw. It wasn't some sort of incredible throw. No. It was just an accurate throw. And Cantu didn't pick up the pace. And you, could, you knew it was going to happen. You didn't even have to wait for the call from the ump. You were right. First pitch, breaking ball, caught on and missed again. Breaking ball, first pitch, in the dirt, swung on. Just the lack of discipline for this Bulls offense has just been a killer today. And that play before was way more of a killer. Because oh, for sure. Eases Sam Jacobsack's mind completely. And quickly ahead, 0-2 is Sam, Sam Jacobsack. Dante Mitchell 0-2 with two Ks on the day. And the ball, and they always tell you, the ball is always going to move faster than the runner. So you got to beat it. you got to be way ahead of that ball. Here's the 0-2. Breaking ball, kind of a half swing there by Mitchell. And you can just sense, by the way, that that other side, uh, the Northeastern dugout, they are just fired up. This is a team that went on the road to Bama. And they're feeling their season turn around right now. That pitch is kind of way, 1-2. and two. Charles Barkley. One and two to Dante Mitchell, Bulls freshman center fielder. And you got to think situations like that, Derek. Base running mistakes, lack of effort. That ball is taken down and away. Two and two, and check if he swung. I don't even think he took a bat <laughs> off his shoulder, but okay. He's optimistic. Whatever, tickles your fancy. We're on a roll right now. Let's see if we can yeah, have right? a no swing and become a strike. Can't hurt to ask. All right, twos are wild here. Bottom of the sixth, Bulls trailing by one. Fastball cut on a miss, strike three. And that's the hat trick for Dante Mitchell. And the Bulls go down. 15 straight innings, no runs here for the Bulls offense. We head to the seventh. Northeastern leading USF with one nothing. You're listening to baseball. USF Bulls Unlimited presented by Matt. Bulls closing out the Welcome back, top of the seventh here at USF, USF Baseball Stadium, Jay Retcher and Derek Sharp. I gotta say, I'm a little surprised. Can't you still the game here? I thought that was one of those times where if you lollygag it back, man, the team's struggling that they take him out, but hey, luckily he's still in the game. For his sake, luckily he's still in the well, game. Well, remember, they pinch hit for Mesnier, That's so true. you already were down one outfielder. That's true. And their outfield depth isn't exactly that big right now, so you had Pedrado and 
And we're missing is another option, but Rogers is the one that's going to go in in well, right field. Carmine Lane, well, yeah, I mean, he pinch hit for Besnier there, and you're right. Pedrado now goes out to right field. And looking like there'd be a change in the order here now for Northeastern. A late call here by Coach Glavin. He heads into the dugout. And let's let's be let's be realistic here and explain it better. Lane is of their outfield options the least as far as an actual outfielder oh, yeah, goes. Sure. As far as defensive goes, he's just he's a converted outfielder. Pedrado is a true outfielder, and that's why he stays in the game. A good catch there. The game, a good catch there by Coach Glavin. Because it looked like Jeff Costello, the right fielder, was heading up to the plate, and then he goes, "Wait a second, bro, you're not up yet." And he's right. Kyle Peterson is the right hitter here in the top of the seventh inning. Jack Jassiak back on the mound for the Bulls. First pitch cut on, foul tip back, and quickly head 0-1 is Jassiak. After that last strikeout, man, the Northeastern dugout cannot wait to hop on the field. That That's kind of the magic sense they've got going on right now. They already won by a shutout today, and they're doing it again. Second pitch down and away. Looked good, but Hold the ball, one and one. Here's the one one. That ball's caught on a miss, strike two. So regardless of everything else that hasn't been going on, I tell you what, the performance is two now by Jack Jassiak, and we saw it last weekend from Carson Ragsdale. Two real bright spots to this USF team, those two guys in the starting rotation. That ball's just off the outside corner, two and two. Would you be surprised if the rotation gets switched here soon? Put Jaziak to the front end. I would. I put Jaziak one, then, then Ragsdale two, and then maybe Colin Sullivan. So it just doesn't look. And that ball's hit deep to right field. Pedrado's back. He looks like he's going to make the play on the warning track. He does. They've been hitting some balls deep now. Yeah, Peterson just missed his second home run of the day. Pedrado runs it down, and that's one out here in the top of the seventh. Yeah, it's an interesting question. I think one that uh, you might be running on the money with. Remember, no, they weren't afraid to change things around five, last year. So. Baron Stewart became the Friday yes. night starter. He was the midweek starter. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a, it's a legitimate question. Things like that change. And I, I'm, I've always liked Colin Sullivan. I just think he's, he's just, there's just something just to tick off about him. I don't think he's a, and then first pitch squared around by Costello, who tries to bunt it. And Derek, what he tried to do there, and the great thing about it is now we have our YouTube broadcast for these two games today is what Costello tried to do is he tried to square up and bunt, but he didn't just try to bunt. He tried to almost slash and half swing the ball and try to get half swing the bat at the ball and try to get it past the first baseman. And he pops up on the next pitch. And then the Buck's going to settle underneath that for out number two, and he grabs it. But he's trying to shorten up on the bat there and then the ball and just kind of jab the bat real quick. So that all he has to do is get the ball past the pitcher. If he does that, the base hit. And a lot of times the ball doesn't even get to the outfield crest. <laughs> so it's a smart play, but you have to be able to execute it. I'm sure if teams keep playing him like that, where they stack three infielders on the left field side, he'll continue to work on it and maybe uh, make it happen as the year goes on. That'll bring up Ryan Cerrone designated here with two outs. First pitch fouled back. So Jassiak again quickly ahead 0-1. Update over at softball. Bulls trailing going into the last inning, 4-3. Mm -hmm. They just got a home run, though, from A.J. Carter in the bottom of six. Go. And women's basketball leading Memphis by 19 in fourth quarter. It's great. 21 now, 16-42. Break the ball down and in. The basketball team saw a lead. Its lead cut to 10. It had been 19. And then, boom, 8 nothing run to end the third quarter. Nice basically. job. So, well done, guys. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That ball, line drive, one hop to Nicky Gonzalez, throws it over, and that's out number three. So seven strong innings from Jack Jasiak. No help from the offense. Let's see if they can find some magic here in the bottom half. It's Northeastern 1, USF 0. You're listening to baseball on the USF Bulls Radio Network, presented by Marathon. My 2019 out shoot came through. <laughs> okay.
bottom of the seventh here at the USF Baseball Stadium. Derek Sharp. That's him. Jay Retro, that's All me. Right. We're here with you. Derek, we gotta hold on, let me see. I'm standing up. Yep, let's change it up. Let's change it up. I got the no hitter busted up. Shut up, shut out, shut out. Shut out, shut up. Shut out, shut up. Oh, that's right. Yeah, shut up, going. Do, do the math on how long it's been since the Bulls have scored. Fourth inning against the Knowles. So that was the last six. And then so far today, nine plus six, 15, 21. 21. And we're math majors. When we started working at radio together, they told me there wouldn't be math. Derek, you told me on day one there wouldn't be math. I know it. A lot of math. 21 straight innings for the Bulls without a run. Let's see if this is the inning eight where it all changes. Right guy up at the plate. First pitch swing in J.D. Ducca. Could not have gotten to the third baseman quicker. <laughs> I'm both third baseman. Fair makes the play, throws it across the diamond for out number one, five, three. If you're scoring at home, one away for the catcher, Jake Sullivan. Softball doubleheader started at two, and it's threatening to be uh, this one's going to be over before that one. That's not really going to happen, but it's uh, this thing is just zipping along, and we are at the hour and 18 minute mark in the bottom of the seventh. Jake Sullivan, the Bulls catcher. First pitch in there for a cold strike. If anything, Jake Sullivan pitching an entire doubleheader hasn't been much of a physical way on him. It's been so fast. Yeah, yeah first game at time got a little bit kind of lengthy, but he's swinging again, breaking ball, strike two. Yeah, he was trying to tie the game right there, no doubt about it. Well, that's the problem. That's the problem with this offense, Derek. There's too many hero swings where they're trying to make it all up with one swing. And not enough guys putting the ball in play. That's, I mean, when you ask, how do you strike out so much? That's what it is. Sure, right. Here's the 0 2. Breaking ball cut on, strike three again. I mean, it doesn't help that you guys in the middle of the lineup, some of your veteran guys, they're not, they're not having intelligent at bats. So quickly, two away. I feel like I've said that 14 times today. Riley Hogan, and it's, and it's ironic too, Derek, that. When you look at some of the guys that have taken some of the better swings today, they've been some of your younger players. Riley Hogan's taken some good cuts today. Dylan Buck has taken some good cuts today. And those are guys that are freshmen and sophomore, respectively. And that's got to permeate throughout the offense. Or changes you got to think are going to be coming for <laughs> Coach Mole in the offense. There's plenty of guys on the bench looking for an opportunity. And you got a bunch of guys that are going 0 for 3, 0 for 4 with a handful of strikeouts. I mean, it's just not winning baseball. You understand it's a it's a game of failure and you know you're gonna fail seven out of ten times you could still be a hall of famer but my goodness you gotta put the ball in play you gotta make it competitive here's the 0-1 that ball's taken down one and one i really like the makeup of riley, riley hogan here he has been going to transfer yeah from south junior, carolina excuse me the guy that sat out last year really really was biding his time mm -hmm. has been the most impressive hitter this week Easy to pick that out, but he has been a, a bright spot. First year with the Bulls, excuse me. Here's the 1-1, one, one. and that's a ball hit up the middle. Paul Swasser makes the play and fires over. And three up, three down here in the seventh inning. We go to the eighth. I hand the magical baton back to my good friend Derek Sharp. He's got some runs in his pocket. Both of the Bulls do, too. It's 1-0 Northeastern. You're listening to baseball right here on USF Bulls Today, Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Cancer, USF Baseball and Coach Billy Moeller dedicated to fight the end of pediatric cancer. Today, Coach and his team will be the first cancer. This year, we're asking fans to pledge a donation for every spray out during the March, the months of March and April. Visit the website, https. This is the website. Dire is such a dramatic word, but you're starting to feel that way. It just gets an overwhelming sense of 
Is it direness, dire tea, dire straits, whatever it is. It's the Sultan. We need the Sultans of Swing out yes, here. That's that's the whole build up. I was waiting so for that reference to come from you, Jay Ratcher. Love that song. Derek Sharp. Yeah, well, don't try and play the guitar solo at the end. I have a friend who is in, actually, I won't say the name of the band, her name is Frank, a little spill the guitar players, but they tried to do that cover song and got to that part where it, did -did 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 and it, was, it was not pretty. Was it. it was not pretty. It was almost like, let's, I'm tapping out of this one. Uh, next <laughs> song, please. So Jack Jassiak, and a big time bright spot has been his pitching today. Seven innings, 10 strikeouts, just 77 pitches. He could go the CG route here, and you hope it's not for naught. And right now he's ahead 0-1 to Ed Jarvis, the catcher, who so far today is 0-2. for 2, Struck out earlier as it was just a strikeout fest. He really racked him up early. First three batters in the order struck out their first two times up. Jarvis struck out his last at bat. But now he's ahead 2-1 and one as Jasek tried to drop in a couple of curveballs and get him to swing at them. But he's been really sharp with that pitch today. Nothing doing there from... Jarvis, Ed Jarvis, righty on righty here. And he hits that ball pretty well to right into the wind stream. Madrado going back, having to really turn on the speed and dive, and it gets away from him. It's going to go for extra bases. And Jarvis is going to turn that dive by Madrado and the chance to turn it into three, and he does. He poked that ball the other way, and it kept riding with that wind. It was not an easy play whatsoever. And the sophomore from Manhasset, New York, has a big hit for his team. Long Island kid. Grew up about 25 minutes away from me in Manhasset, Long Island. And now you have Spencer Smith up. And I tell you what, you're going to see something here, Derek. Get ready. This is an action play. You got the infield in. And here comes, let me see. That's Coach. Karsten Whitson. Yeah, yeah and, and, and I'm sure that's exactly what's being discussed here. Yeah, this is more about. No it, chance he swings away for a, a base hit here. Here's the thing. There's multiple options you have here, Derek. You have nobody out. Run around third base. Spencer Smith, you know he can handle the bat well. Do you put him on and get the double play? I don't think you do that. Some people would. I wouldn't. No. you got to pitch to him here. you got to get him. But now you have to know with the lefty, the only good thing is with the left-handed bat up, the catcher, Jake Sullivan, kind of see the runner, Jarvis, at third if he takes off early for a suicide squeeze. Third base, Dylan Buck has to do a really good job of keeping Jarvis close to the bag. He can't hold him on like a first baseman does, but he's got to keep him close enough where he can make sure he's keeping him close, but also being able to have enough range to field his position. Incidentally, that was Jarvis. You mentioned he's a sophomore, and you're right about all of that, by the way. We are, I, everyone's going to be so far up here. Did not play last year, so that was his first base hit, and it was a triple and just eluded the grasp of Awesome brought up. You need another sign of how things are going here today. So now it is going to be Smith, left hand side, and he looks at that curveball. And boy, everyone is as far as up, up as you can be on the infield without taking your life into your own hands. Uh, with a one nothing lead for Northeastern, of course, the Huskies have to feel that a second run has, has clinched the game the way it's going, although that's not the case. It just feels that way. And Smith is going to wait and until something he likes because he wasn't even squaring on either of those and that strike was on the inside corner one and one and i don't see a sign being given to him so it looks like they're just letting him swing especially with no outs some coaches say hey let's not play for one let's play for the whole end and get up there and swing the bat surprised really surprised at what we're seeing right now because he swung at that fastball and it's, he's just not a good hitter i mean i hate to say it like that but it's, that's not what he's known for let's and just he's say a good it that bunner. way and he's a good bunner he's already proved how important that bun is right I don't know, it's a very interesting call here. Here's the one-two. There it is. Still runner at third base. Of course, you really not guess punt now, and Smith looks that one inside, two and two. Smith, one for nine, three strikeouts coming in, did get a hit in the second game, and is so far today in the second game, 0 oh for two. So just two hits on the season. Big opening there in the 5-6 hole. Absolutely. If you can just make contact, it should bounce over anybody, but that one was swung on and fouled back, two and two. That ball up the middle is going to be a hit anyway, sure. so it's surprising that Gonzalez is playing so close up the middle. Because even if he feels the ball there, Derek, he's probably not going to be able to make the throw home. I mean, he could because it's the catcher Jarvis at third. Usually you want him playing a little away from the middle, and that ball's in there. Just an absolute peach of a pitch on the inside corner, and Jasiak able to dial up yet another wow. strikeout, give him 11. I mean, he is going to have incredible numbers through two games and maybe 
a no, no decisions to show for it. Of course, this could be this would be a losing decision. Yeah. That's why I hate the uh, phrase losing effort. You can't call this a losing effort by Jesse Heck. Absolutely not. Top of the order. It's got Holtzwasser, and he's swinging at the first pitch. Tress trying to get something deep to score the run in the infield. Yeah. Still up. That is foul back. 0-1. Oh, now you see Ducka playing up the middle more. So given that 3-4 hole big time, and they're just letting Holtzwasser swing for it, saying, hey, if you can elevate the ball, get it to the outfield, that's going to be a run. Really, really surprised there was no bunting. Well, there you go. he just got contact on it. Great job there by the leadoff man for the Huskies. And it's 2-0. So the triple pays off. And coming through, haven't exactly racked up the hits today, but at least a modest amount for the Huskies. That's their fifth hit of the day, and that's been enough in this one. 2 nothing. Another thing that plays into it, you got to think with Jarvis, their backup catcher, he's probably not the most fleetest of foot, so a squeeze, sometimes you just kind of bunt into it out. Well, this is going to be the second visit by Carson and Whitson, and that means it's going to be the end of the day for Jassiak. But, folks, he deserves a huge hand yeah, for he what does. he's done today. He has done his job and I just say even more than his job going into the eighth inning in his second college start and the folks that are here are showing their appreciation I even see a couple Northeastern fans over there clapping because they realize yeah, and actually more than a couple a handful yeah. which is a, a great sign of respect and shows that they know their baseball over there but right now Jassiak would stand to be the losing pitcher I'll tell you who the new guy is when we come back this is baseball and USF Bulls Unlimited presented by Marathon And the new pitcher for the Bulls will be Logan Lyle, the senior lefty. Second year with the Bulls after starting off the Juco route. Normally comes in and gets you through the lefty-centric part of the lineup. First man he will face here is a lefty, although after that a couple of righties. So this indeed just could be a one-pitch at-bat appearance for Lyle, although he was certainly capable of going more than one at-bat. Last time out was a rough one against FSU. Struggled in an inning and a third, actually did well in his first inning, then ran into trouble. It was a key hit by pitch that sort of led to FSU being able to string together some hits and score three runs. That's the inning that they tied the Bulls up on Tuesday night. Seems like a long time ago when the Bulls were leading the 12th ranked team in the country. 3 0. They lose that game 7 7 to 3. Now, before that, in two appearances against Marist, he went an inning each time, gave up a hit each time, but no runs and one strikeout. So overall, is the ERA is eight, but that, again, one bad appearance early on as a reliever, and that's what your ERA is going to look like. He comes in with the runner on first base. That runner, Holtzwasser, just drove in the second run of the game for Northeastern. And the Bulls, in what looks like, unfortunately, the way things are going today, a big hole, 2-0. Holtzwasser's, Holtzwasser's second hit of the day, third hit of the season. They're going to keep an eye on him back over there at first base, throwing over for the second time. Of course, that would make sense for them to try and steal a base here. It's at all possible. Last year, this guy did it a few times. Uh, try 27 steals in 31 attempts. So certainly worth a third throw over, and then maybe no more. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? That was the third offering. Of course, lefty generally has the more dangerous move, so Scott Holtzwasser certainly aware of that. And the man at the plate, Jared Dupree, incidentally, sees that curveball of Lyle, which is his go-to pitch. Makes that upper mid-80s fastball look even more impressive when he spots it. Dupree doubled his first time up. I hear some cheering behind us. Do, could we yeah. have possibly <laughs> had another rally for USF in the bottom of the seventh in softball? We'll give you an update in a second. 
Last time we heard such a cheer like that, it was when, as we found out, Kendall Williams earlier today had a two-run walk-off homer against Tennessee when the Bulls were losing 1-0. One, 1-1 one one as Lyle does spot that fastball. That's Wasser jumping, dancing around at first base, trying to get into Lyle's head with his big oven mitt. And that fastball drifts outside. Count says one and two on the board. Called it a strike. I think it's two and one. No, he called it a strike. He did call it a strike. But it was just <laughs> Sullivan came up throwing, and a lot of times you don't get that call. Good job by the home plate umpire, Rick Darby, by watching the ball and not the player. He's got that uh, very casual, casual move over there. Bulls did tie it up just now in softball, incidentally. That's a nice outside. That one called a ball two and two. Doesn't get more clutch than the USF softball team. I'll tell you that much. And it was... Yes, a, a throwing error by the catcher after A.J. Carter walked. And there's a bad throw speaking of here at baseball. And runners got a chance to get to third with that speed as it gets far enough away from first baseman Hogan. Decent throw, but it's not going to be near enough. So the Bulls overly concerned with the man at first base. And now, well, they don't have to worry about him anymore, except he's at third base. So that is going to go as an error against USF, and that'll be number two of the day, no doubt, about, no doubt about that. Now, a very good hitter, Dupree, has a chance to add to this 2-0 lead. So far, not good. Out of the pen for Lyle. He hasn't really done anything bad throwing the ball towards the plate. In fact, that was a great curveball, swung on a miss by Dupree. So there are two away. Big Gotta keep this 2 nothing, she absolutely. As, as we mentioned, it's dire right now, but you can't think in those terms, and you've got to try and keep this game within range, and uh, speculated that it might be a one-pitch, one-person at-bat sort of situation for Lyle, and let's see what the conversation is here, because there is a lefty on deck. Do they walk a guy, or do they just take Lyle out of the game? Looks like they're going to do the latter. So we'll tell you who the new, presumably right-handed pitcher is. When we come back, Bulls down 2 nothing here, two out top of the eighth. This is baseball and USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. One run in here in the top of the eighth inning for the Northeastern Huskies. If you want to really stretch to try and be positive, the Bulls do have a chance of getting into the Northeastern bullpen based on this long inning. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that on the other end, but the primary concern is getting out of this, keeping the score 2 nothing, and that'll be charged to Dylan Burns, the Okeechobee kid who is really, as I mentioned, last year went from being the midweek starter to the Friday night starter, has found himself I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of Aaron Stewart. Sorry, Dylan Burns. I know who Dylan Burns is. He's a you know, Richard C. You know. I know the difference between he, you know, he and he and uh, Barron are, are very similar guys, trust me, but <laughs> that's the confusion. He is the redshirt senior from Vero Beach, and he, similar to Stewart in all seriousness, did sort of have a resurgence at the end of last year, and he came on for the team and had some big starts, became the midweek guy, and now this year is really kind of an important later inning reliever for the Bulls. He pitched two innings in two different games, the Friday and the Sunday game against Marist. As I mentioned, went two innings both times, struggled the first time, walked a couple, and gave up a run. Second time, settled it down for two one-hit innings and two strikeouts. So, Dylan Burns, certainly a guy that can get out of the situation you would hope, but a very difficult hitter to try and face, and he starts him off with a good fastball inside called strike. One, Ian Fair, the batter. Holt Swatzer, who had the second RBI hit here of the day for the Northeastern Huskies 
There's nothing, nothing through five. They put up one in the six, and now here one here in the eighth, and it's one and one to the defending conference hitter of the year. Batting average wise, 367. Fair today, in this game anyway, 0 for 3. Ooh, tailing fastball inside, swung on a miss. Nice pitch there, 1 and 2. If you could locate that one there every single time, you're gold. Fair swinging over that one. Almost looked like that was a little bit of a two seam action. Cut underneath the bat. Nice pitch there for Byrne. He'll try and do it again. Oh, that one is hit sharply to Gonzalez. He has to hurry this though up, and it's going to be on a bounce, and Hogan nice makes play. the play. That was not easy. Fair showed some decent speed. You thought I was going to say fair speed, didn't you? <laughs> the Bulls do give up a run on two hits. Uh, there was there was the one error with the bad pickoff play and one left on base. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It's now two nothing Northeastern. This is baseball and USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Two nothing, and nothing's on the scoreboard for the Bulls all afternoon long. We are just past seven o'clock. We are starting off the bottom of the eighth inning, and the Bulls trying to strike the scoreboard against Northeastern. The Huskies pick second in the Colonial, and frankly, a pitcher that you would have thought they could have gotten gotten well against. Sam Jacobsek, he's gotten some help. From his defense, there have been some sharp hit balls, but it's not like been a, you know, six or eight of them. It's just been a couple. Dylan Buck hits that one really well and deep, but the center fielder Dupree is going to get a little bit of a boost from the win. And even though Dylan Buck has had himself a game, had the first hit of the day, he is going to be retired there. And again, quickly, one down. Hey, you got to like the way he's been swinging the bat today. It's one of the few bright spots, Dylan Buck. So something you carry over for the rest of the at least the next couple of games how well he's been swinging it and this is a team that again it's alabama but their first two games they lost 10 nothing and 8 nothing they, they were on the wrong end of two lopsided shutouts and the cortez hits one sharply but right to smith on a short hop and that's a short hop over to first and their short hops being fielded cleanly by the huskies for two quick outs and i have to look at jacob sack who's Got his career high in strikeouts already, by the way, with six. This pitch count is unbelievable. And again, we're talking about swinging early, knowing it's going to be around the zone and trying to get something going. But he's only thrown 67 pitches. Yeah. I mean, that is that is unbelievable. I'm trying. I, I would only imagine what the record is in college baseball for yeah, right? complete game nine <laughs> innings and fewest pitches thrown. But it, it can't be much more than the, the pace that he's on right now. It's Greg Maddoxian. Yeah, 67. My goodness. You know, taking that first ball, probably on purpose, <laughs> as Nick Gonzalez, wherever that was going to be, it's a ball low, as it turns out. He didn't swing it, though, so that's a good start for him. And that fastball is high, so it's 2-0. and oh. Again, as I try with the reverse jinx here, mm -hmm. because he has just been cruising along. Let's see what his most, his deepest uh, performance is. I'm sure this is it already. That one is going to be called strike. Two and one. Two away, bottom of the eighth inning. Bulls are getting shut out. Two pitchers combined. Strike out 13 bulls. It hasn't been strikeouts today. It's been stuff hit right at people. In couple, this game, yeah. A couple not right at them. That ball almost hit Nick Gonzalez. He turns away from it. It's three and one. 
So last year, let's see, his sophomore season through 32 innings, through 17 innings as a freshman. So I don't even have to look. <laughs> I'm sure that going into the eighth inning is as deep as he's ever gone. If he's ever pitched in the eighth inning, it was in relief. And gets back into this one, three and two, as Gonzalez just hoping to get on by taking that pitch. His previous high in an outing was four and third innings, and he gave up, gave those five innings against Alabama, but now he's got seven and two thirds and is one strike away from making it eight. Here's the three, two pitch, and taken all the way, called strike three, oh, ball is dropped. Oh, that ball was on the ground. We thought that was low, Bulls put up a protest. But Northeastern thinks the officiating here is great. They love it. <laughs> they, Northeastern Huskies, are leading going to the ninth, two to nothing. This is baseball and USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. Sharp, Jay Richard, Retro with you, reminding when you're traveling to see the USF Bulls, and you can do that on Wednesday, by the way, go down to Miami where they're taking on the Hurricanes at 3 in the afternoon. You can start with the fill-up at Marathon, and to make it a winning trip, go to mileshavemeaning.com. Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Well, you would like to say that, and again, this is happening games this year for the Bulls, and earlier today, in the first few innings, right, when they, yeah. they got runners on base, but it's just that, it's not, we're not to that point right now. And that's what's been very disappointing and discouraging to see how the game has just gone in that direction for the Bulls. I'm not going to say they're going up there looking to get it over with, but they're just not being able to string anything together right now. It's, it's, it is very discouraging. Kind of sets up an important bottom of the ninth inning. First, get through the top of the ninth. And well, Northeastern swings the first pitch, and it's fielded cleanly over there. Short, another low throw, but Hogan has shown the propensity to not have issues with those and retired quickly there is Corey DiLoretto for the first out. This is going to be, as it stands, a less than two hour ball game. We'll just hit the hour. Left fielder, number 19, Kyle 25 Peterson. minute mark. That's snappy, Kyle Peterson. Snappy. He's 03. He's grounded out a couple times and a blown out, so give him credit for not striking out on a day where that's happened so often. Dylan Burns. Slider away. Beautiful pitch. 0 1 to the lefty. Look at their scorecard and see if. Anyone besides this kid that's been out there the whole day has not struck out. Be a feather in his cap. He's had already one of those today with a big home run that blew it open earlier in that five run sixth inning. Six nothing looks at that pitch low in the in the zone 0 and 2. I think he is the only guy that hasn't struck out today. And boy, my calls have been great. I need to be really specific that's going right. into the bottom of the ninth. There's True. no way the Wolves are gonna win this. Thing as he strikes out and indeed that means that everyone in the lineup has struck out except once i'll take it back Corey DiLoretto, the guy that was just on before uh singled his first two times up and did not strike out so that didn't completely jinx him but a lot of k's though tried my hardest all oh, is another called strike and burns is zipping through the inning so far as well he's now pitched a full inning and just to 11 pitches now and he gets the called strike to get ahead Give the Bulls relievers credit, they're getting ahead, unlike in the last game where it just sort of drug on at the end. Jeff Costello, who is 0 for 3, struck out around a couple of flyouts. And that ball is nubbed over to third baseline, well out of play 0 and 2. Northeastern, again, we should mention, 
pick to finish second in the conference. I said it was a interesting uh, way it went last year. That one is grounded too short as they had him played over there. Of course, he hits it to the left of the infield. And that is a really quick in inning. I'll have to tell you about uh, there last year in the conference when we hit the bottom of the ninth because that's where we're headed. Last chance for the Bulls to not only avoid getting shut out on both ends of a doubleheader, but of course to be avoiding a sweep in the doubleheader. When we come back, it's 2 nothing Northeastern. This is baseball on USF Bulls Unlimited, presented by Marathon. This, um, I think it's an Elvis tune, this dramatic tune that they always play going into the bottom of the ninth inning. I feel like I was just hearing it a couple hours ago, and it's because I was. This uh, second game of the doubleheader has absolutely zipped along. Over at softball, by the way, where we actually may get to see the end nice. of the game because they're in the bottom of the eighth inning. And basically, Bulls tied it with one in the bottom of the seventh, and then the international tiebreaker rule, meaning both teams get a runner at second to start the inning. Well, FIU didn't score with that advantage, and now the Bulls just did a sack bunt. Megan Sheehan advances the runner, so the Bulls over behind us have a chance to win twice in their doubleheader against two different teams. So, of course, the baseball team just hoping for one win here today. It'd be great. Another update on women's basketball. We'll pass that final score along to you, 68 to 47. So now that is going to be the day for the guy that pitched extraordinarily well for his team, Jacob Sack, who's eight innings, two hits, seven strikeouts, career high in everything, and he could have kept going. Seven, oh, sure. 72 pitches is all he threw. So now it'll be default, not by default, because he's the guy that they want to close out the game facing Jordan Santos, who is going to pinch hit for the Bulls. So the Bulls looking for anything to get it going here. In the bottom of the ninth inning, Santos is pinch hitting basically for the shortstop. And so he's couple, face hitting for Cantu. Cantu, sorry. That's right. One off on my scorecard. Looks like Michael Montez on deck for Carmine Lane. Yeah, or, uh, excuse me, Madrada. And I was going to suggest, I uh, would not be surprised at all if we see a bunch of changes here in this inning just to try and get something going. But so far, Sanders likes to draw walks. He's had 2 0. That's going to be a pitch right down the heart. 2 1 default. Preseason all conference honorable mention pitcher. He is their closer. Of course, they haven't had a chance to put out a closer. So he can throw it in the mid 90s is his first chance at saving a game. And Jordan Santos sees that fastball and tries to get a piece of it, cannot do it. Swing and a miss, two and two. So the Bulls were shut down by a, this hard throwing pitcher, maybe in an awkward way this could help them out. But right now it's not looking like it because default's bringing it two and two. And Santos does get a piece of that one, fouls it off. Right, Michael Montez, who has gotten one at bat this year. I can remember. Junior from Wyndham. That was at the end of the uh, FAMU game the other night. He will be on deck. Santos looking at a 2-2 two two pitch, starting off the bottom of the ninth. And that ball tails high and away. 3-2. and two. Did appear once against Alabama in three innings. Struck out three, just gave up one run, and that was in the close game, the three, uh, six to three loss. Again, Northeastern was shut out its first two games, 10-0, 8-0, and they're on the verge of shutting out the Bulls twice here. 
Santos gets a piece of that one. Nice job. Fouls it off three and two. He's staying alive. Anything he can do right now would be welcomed by the Bulls. The fault incidentally just three saves last year, but he's taken over the role this season. And the Bulls look to make him work for it here. Haven't made Northeastern work that much today, and wow, they're going to have to do it because that is a well taken high and outside ball four by Santos, and he'll get a free pass, well earned. Fouling off a couple of pitches that would have been strike threes, and now Mike Montez comes up. So, Bulls going with the dual pinch hit approach. And if you're wondering, Dante Mitchell is on deck. He has struggled today, so it'll just be two to start things off here. Check center. Like a food inspector. <laughs> this will be the Besnier, then Lane, then Bedrado, then Montez spot in the order. Bulls will worry about who plays defense out there later. Yeah. If they if they need it, that'll be a good problem to worry about. And that is a good pitch on the inside corner. Located perfectly 0-1. So far, Bulls have two hits in this one. Four hits earlier today. They're averaging three runs a game. They've seen that dip today. Already low total, but it can all change. The fortunes can all change, hopefully, in one inning. And Montez looks... The ball high, one and one. Of course, Santos in a two nothing game, one nothing. Maybe you think about starting him, but in this situation, station to station, get to the top of the order, and try to pull off a memorable, memorable and important comeback. Small glance over there by default. And blows that Ooh. fastball by Montez. He almost swung out of his shoes. He's a redshirt freshman from Miami Pace. But Miramar didn't play last year, and as I mentioned, got in a pinch hitting performance, actually walked against FAMU. Walk would be fine here. Softball second and third behind us with one out trying to win again and walk off. And Montes, uh, yeah, Hit off him. himself, absolutely, because that was going to advance the runner, but probably retire the batter, so it's probably best, one and two. Softball home in that game or away? They are going. To, they are the home team, and it's a good question. Oh, so not always in these events do you are indeed the home team, even if you're the, the home team. So that means that if they had the Texas tiebreaker, FIU wasn't able to play a run with that Texas tiebreaker. Yes, is that exactly, correct? Exactly. Nice. Good work there. Nice keen eye. Tough start by Cam Dolby, but Vivian Pond came on three and two thirds innings of scoreless relief. Georgina Cookport pitched that last inning. God, she's had some week, huh? Yeah. Default on the one and two, and Montez takes it high and inside. Not quite got that control yet. And now the Bulls got a little life here. Been looking for it all day long, honestly. We haven't even gotten to the point to get frustrated in this <laughs> game. In the last half, it's been mostly nothing doing on the base paths. Now the Bulls have a runner on first. And Montez just can't catch up with that fastball. Right down the heart, and there's one away. Ball gets the strikeout, and now it's Dante Mitchell. There's one thing, Mitchell struggled with the off-speed, but we haven't really seen much off-speed in the offering here from default, so this could actually be a decent matchup for the Bulls. We'll find out shortly enough. So Sam Jacobsack, only 72 innings and 72 pitches in eight innings. Now Brandon default trying to close it off, and there is that fastball right on the inside hands. Mitchell took a whack at it. Had nothing to do there but foul it off. Surprised at all that he's not getting pinch hit for? Like I said, they only have so many outfielders yeah, left. They really, yeah, wouldn't, uh, they really wouldn't have anybody well, to play in the outfield. But like you also said, <laughs> you can't worry about that right yeah, but now. At some point, <laughs> you don't have any left. The math doesn't add up. I hear you. <laughs> and Mitchell just absolutely a bad swing there. That ball was high in the zone, and he looked confused and took a hack at it at the last minute. That's one that you do on a two-track. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's a one-strike pitch. You let that go, and it's fouled off 0-2. So, now it's starting to switch back into the way it's been, in favor of the visitors from near Boston. 0-2. And that's a fastball that Mitchell just looks at. That's the one that you swing at with two strikes and eat it. And so that was nothing doing for the Bulls, and now they're down to their last out. It has been not the best showing for the Bulls here today. 
Runners in scoring position, they haven't hardly had any today. Usually you can look at that and think that's kind of the key step, but they just haven't had the chances. 0 for 2 in this game with runners in scoring position. That's the golden sombrero for Mitchell as well. Eight plate appearances today. Six Running for the bowl at first base, okay. number 23, Alex Bello. With Alex Bello in for Santos at first base. The Bulls were one for nine with runners in scoring position earlier today, so they said they've only had two chances with runners in scoring position today in the second game. Alex Bello we might go ahead and give him second base. Not that that would really matter to the Bulls. They need to get a hit here. J.D. Ducca swings at the first pitch and fouls it off. Ducca, so far today, I think just heard some cheering behind us. We might have had something good happen in that game. Went 0 for 2 with the walk in the first one and 0 for 3 today. Struck out the second time up. Default's going to look over at first base, but concentrate on the batter, Ducca, here. And that is a blazer of fastball. Late on it is Ducca, and the Bulls are down to their last strike. And what has been an extremely, extremely difficult day. Bello at first. Ducca at the plate, pulls down 2-0. 0-2 oh pitch coming up from default. And he gets a piece of that one, skies it high and out of play. Over towards the softball field. But I heard it hit the concrete here. Bulls do have the bases loaded over there, by the way. A couple of walks. So anything doing with bases loaded and one out will win them a the game. Turn up our crowd mic a little extra. You might hear something good yeah. on that side of things. We'd love to hear some crowd noise here at the baseball stadium. And if J.D. Doug can get a base hit, it would solve that trick. Pass the baton to the next guy. He's got the big baton in his hand and he needs to make contact or this game will be over. And it looks at like a good pitch on the outside corner. Well taken. One and two. He filled at regular depth. And the Bulls had to scratch to take two or three from Marist in their opening series, then lost two in Tallahassee earlier this week, about to get shut out twice in a doubleheader, unless something changes. And that ball is hit pretty well, but to the center fielder, Dupree, and Northeastern is jumping up and down. They have completed the sweep of a doubleheader for their first two wins of the season. A very, very difficult day for the Bulls. They lose the first end of the doubleheader 10 to nothing, and they lose the second end by the score of two to nothing to see their record on the season go to two and five. We'll wrap it up when we come back. This is baseball and USF Bulls Unlimited presented by Marathon. Well, certainly did not think this was going to happen. Uh, did not disrespect the opponent, knew that Northeastern, after being 0-3, had a lot to do with the opponent, knew that they were picked to finish second in the Colonial. I can finish my story yep. last year. They, they finished third in the Colonial with a 12-12 record. There are only two teams above 500 in a nine-team conference last year, uh, but they're picked to finish second in that league, only behind the team that's won it the last two years, North Carolina Wilmington. So it's a good team, but this was the pitching matchup that should have gone in the Bulls' favor, and I think Jack Jassiak pitched well. 
But right now, it doesn't matter who's pitching for the other team. The Bulls aren't hitting them. Nobody. No, what is it? 24 straight innings without a run for the Bulls offense. And I don't know what Coach Bull has to do, but more Mike Montez, more guys on the bench that haven't gotten it. You got you to gotta switch things up. I mean, it just it's not, it's not working right now. So... I don't know what you can do. I mean, there's some good swings. I like what Dylan Buck showed today. I thought Riley Hogan had a couple of good at-bats. But Derek, being here for 18 innings, brother, mm. out of those two guys, uh, it's, there's about 12 or 15 of them that are just not swinging the bat very well. And it's not even that they're not. It's one thing if you're not getting hits. But the at-bats aren't competitive. You're swinging at first pitch, breaking balls in the dirt. You can't do that. Like, these are not traits of a successful team, a winning team. Team that is feeling and outwardly showing is playing oh, the yeah. effects of what's going on They're in their pressing. season. Yeah. Well, I would get, I mean, this is when we give you the pitching matchups and some, some positives. Unfortunately, uh, I don't think the pitching matchup matters as far as who's going for the other team. Uh, I think the Bulls have a great pitcher going in Carson Ragsdale, and it's just going to come down to snapping out of it. And we got to be honest, the guy who's pitching for Northeastern is the guy who pitched well against Alabama. And incidentally, as a freshman who had a high school, was drafted in the 11th round by the Boston Red Sox, and his name is Sebastian Keene. So the Bulls have got to try and get it going against that kid tomorrow we will be on the air at 12:45. we can tell you that behind us the softball team did win its second straight walk off brooke hartman singled again they tied it they were down four two got a run in the sixth got a run in the seventh and a run in the eighth to win it so they win that game earlier today kendall williams homered to win against tennessee and un unreal day and then the women's basketball team rolled memphis 68 to 47 four bowls in double figures all between 11 and 13 points so they get a nice win to keep up their hopes for a top four finish in the conference when it comes to that they'll be at home for the next two by the way and we will be back here tomorrow actually jim lap will be back here going solo tomorrow i would say a long day jay but uh let's see five and a half hours including between games and a double header is actually pretty quick unfortunately that's because the offense struggle but thank you for uh, coming back from the booth man. we'll see you soon enough and thank you all for listening to us on USF Bulls Unlimited for the final time today. Final score in the first game, 10-0, 10, 10 runs, 13 hits, one error, 0-4-1 for the Bulls. And unfortunately in the second game, they even had fewer hits as they lose 2-0, just five hits for Northeastern with no errors. USF, no runs, two hits.